stuff. That's not how to go. All right. Hey guys, it's Tom. Happy April Fool's Day! So this year for April Fool's Day, I thought I'd do something a little bit differently. Usually on my... Hey guys, it's Tom. Happy April Fool's Day! So this year for April Fool's, I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Usually on my YouTube channel, you can expect videos that are like, say, no less than 20 minutes. Well this year, friend, for this video, it's gonna be a little bit differently because this video... Hey guys, it's Tom. Happy April Fool's Day! So this year for April Fool's, I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Usually on my YouTube channel, you can expect videos that are, say, no less than 20 minutes. Well, this video is going to be a little bit longer because I'm going to talk about every single CD in my CD collection. Yes, I'm going to show them all to you and I'm going to talk about each one. Now, I sh before I start, I should say that I don't have everything, obviously. And there are a couple of uh, big titles that I don't have because as a music collector, I want to have the ultimate copy of something, even if that includes the super deluxe edition of, you know, whichever album uh, it may be. But I have a, a few of them, and so if, when I get to an artist that has a, a, an album that you would, that you would um, expect from a music collector like me, uh, maybe I don't have it, but I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit. And... Uh, you know, and also there are a couple of CDs that I just got, or there are CDs that I've played you once or twice, so I don't. My memory's not that um, great about them. So some of the commentaries will be uh, pretty short. And uh, like I said, guys, this is going to be a long video. So I have my water and I have my mints um, because by the end of this video, I'm going to be tired, I'm going to be exhausted, and I probably won't be able to speak English anymore. So I guess with all that said, let's get to it. So here we go. Get a little swig of water before we just get started here. I'm probably going to drink a little bit after each pile that I get through. Oh, here we go. All right, so let's begin this in three, two, one. First up is uh, ABBA Gold. Uh, this is a collection of uh, 19 tracks um, of theirs. Uh, one of the best-selling albums of all time. Uh, ABBA, really good group. Um, I mainly know their songs are from the radio, and so I picked this up. It was really cheap, and um, yeah... There's so many great songs on here. Dancing Queen, uh, Knowing Me, Knowing You, Take a Chance on Me. Those are only the first three tracks. Uh, really great 70s uh, pop. And really, if you have, if you, if you got it on an ABBA CD in your collection, this is the one that you got to have. And uh, yeah. All right, so let's move on. And this is all going to be in chronological order. Uh, not chronological, alphabetical order. See, I, I can't talk already. Up next is uh, Dirt by Alice in Chains. Now, I bought this CD because I have been told that I should have it. I bought it for like two bucks, and I've never played it. And I know that might, might shock a, a few people, because this has got some of their biggest uh, songs on here. Uh, Wood, Rooster, Them Bones, Angry Chair. But I, I, I just never played it, but somehow I have it. Uh, next we have uh, the Almond Brothers. I got uh, one, two, three, four, the first four albums by the Almond Brothers, starting with their the, their debut album, the Almond Brothers Band. Uh, the Almond Brothers Band. Uh, great memories of these guys uh, from high school. Greg Almond, Dwayne Almond, and um, all the other, all the other members of the band that don't share their last names. Uh, their first album. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you. While it is a very good album. Um, it is kind of like what you would expect from a debut album. Uh, it's pretty strong. It's pretty weak in some places. I say weak because um, 
Uh, they have a song on here uh, called Dreams, which I really like. It's a really nice, surreal song. But as like when I was like 14 or 15 when I heard this, um, I didn't really think much of it. Um, now I think it's a, it's a really interesting thing to go back and listen to uh, where these guys uh, came from with this album. Plus you got you know, songs like Trouble No More and Whipping Post. Like iconic songs that would become Almond Brothers um, staples and uh, featured in, in their live shows. So there's that one. And then their second album is called, oh, the booklet's a little bit uh, crooked. This is Idlewild South, their second album. Uh, kind of like the first album continued a little bit. Um, but you have um, songs like Revival and Midnight Rider, two of their most iconic songs. Midnight Rider, probably their most iconic song at this point. Uh, you have In Memory of Elizabeth Reed, which gets a phenomenal live treatment in the, the next album I'll, I'll talk about. And yeah, just not not another bad album either. Um, like I said, kind of follows uh, a lot of the same patterns as uh, the, the first album. Uh, and also interesting to hear uh, the band, um, as they progress later uh, in their careers, it's interesting to go back to these albums and see, um, see wh where they came from. And then next, it's the big one. Yes, it's the Allman Brothers at Fillmore East. Um, man, this is a phenomenal live album. Statesboro Blues, Done Somebody Wrong, Stor Stormy Monday, You Don't Love Me, Hot Lana, and Memory Elizabeth Reed and Whipping Post. Now, if you look on the back here, which I don't, I don't think you can see on the camera really that well, but a lot of the uh, the time stamps on here, you got You Don't Love Me, which is 19 minutes long, and Memory Elizabeth Reed, which is 13 minutes long, and then you got Whipping Post, which is 23 minutes long, because the Allman Brothers are just one of those great jam bands. They were guys that could just, you know, take a certain chord progression and just like go from there. Um, these live cuts are phenomenal. Um, I know that last year uh, there was a, what was it, six CD set called like the Complete Fillmore East Collection. Um, that I haven't got yet. Um, and what's also interesting is that um, this at Fillmore East um, a lot of the songs were sort of at, this blew this blew my mind. Some songs were actually kind of cut down so they could fit on on the album. And so since this is an iconic album, the way that it was, I gotta have it. I think I even have it on LP somewhere. And just a phenomenal live album. Definitely, you know, give this one a listen. And then uh, their fourth album, the first one released after the tragic death of Dwayne Allman. This is Eat a Peach. This is the uh, two CD. Uh, deluxe edition. Let's see if I can open it up right there. There it is. Um, this came out, like I said, after Dwayne Allman had passed away. Um, he's featured on the last out track of this album, Little Martha. Um, you know what? Uh, the first disc is the Eat a Peach album, and the second disc is their final Fillmore East concert. Now, what's kind of funny is that uh, one track on here, One Way Out, is on both discs because um, that was performed at their last uh, Film Reese concert, and then I guess they, they liked it so much that they put it on the actual album, Eat a Peach. Uh, but it's a great track, so I don't really mind hearing it twice. Uh, but as for the album, there are a lot more sketched out songs. I don't know if that really makes a whole lot of sense, but especially after um, uh, at Film East, they really kind of uh, honed their skills as a band. You've got Ain't Wasting Time No More, Melissa... Um, Stand Back, Blue Sky, like absolutely great studio tracks. And then they've complemented it with uh, some uh, two live tracks, Mountain Jam, which is 33 minutes long. I think that hard to believe they put this on an album in 1972. And then Little Martha, which is like a Dwayne Allman solo piece at the end. Um, very good album. Um, I haven't played it maybe as much as, as, much as I, I'd like to. Um, and the deluxe edition... Uh, is worth getting. I know that uh, this concert, the final concert, is is included in the uh, the complete Fillmore East concerts uh, set that came out last year. But since I don't have that yet, this will do. Uh, finishing up the A's, we have uh, the Association. Uh, this was a where did I pick this up? Walmart. This was like a ten uh, disc, ten track um, disc at Walmart called Flashback with the Association. Uh, the thing about the association is that they were a very like nice sounding uh, '60s pop band. Um, yeah, they're they're just a lot of fun to listen to. Uh, you got "Along Comes Mary," "Cherish," "Windy," "Never My Love," er "Everything That Touches You." Um, those are really the the the, the big highlights from this. Um, not a band that I know personally that uh, you really need to own actual albums from them. 
Um, in fact, there's another album of theirs, uh, The Association Greatest Hits, um, which is probably uh, a bit better th than, uh, than this, even though I haven't heard that yet. But from what I've heard of these guys, uh, they're a nice band, uh, they're innocent enough, and you know what, I don't think I'd ever need to own anything really uh, more than this. Okay, I'm going to take a little quick uh, drink of water here. That was only the A's, and I'm getting kind of tired already, so let's keep going. So starting off on the B's, uh, you have a Tao, uh, Tao, is it Tao or, or Tao? Uh, I'm just going to say Tao. Tao Bachman, uh, debut album. It's even got, still got the price sticker on it. Um, truthfully, this was like, actually 99 cents when I bought it. Uh, and I only bought this for one song, uh, She's So High, which is track two. And I haven't even bothered to listen to, uh, to the rest of the album. Um, I guess I bought it because I was just going to buy She's So High on iTunes as one song. And on iTunes, songs are like one twenty nine each. And so I was like, yeah, for 99 cents, I can buy that plus the whole album. But I still haven't heard it. But She's So High, really, really fun song to listen to. Uh, then you have uh, Bad Company, 10 from 6. Ten tracks from six albums of theirs, um, but I actually counted. It's actually five albums. Um, one of them is skipped on here. Uh, Burning Sky. That's the album on here that's not represented with any of the tracks here. But yeah, Bad Company, Greatest Hits. Paul Rogers, one of the great uh, rock and roll vocalists. Um, just a phenomenal band. Uh, I haven't heard much of this yet. I, I actually just got this also, but you got Can't Get Enough, Feel Like Making Love, Shooting Star, uh, Bad Company, Rock and Roll Fantasy, but I'll have to give this one more of a listen, but Bad Company, you can tell by listening that these were guys who had songs all over the radio in the 70s. Uh, great uh, classic rock band sound on, on this one, and uh, just a really, really... Uh, just a really cool thing uh, to listen to. Haven't really... Uh, immersed myself too much in their albums, um, but this will do. Uh, next we have The Band. Yes, there was a band called The Band, and it's the album uh, The Band. I know what you're thinking. They're like, dude, where's music from Big Pink? Well, I haven't... That one's hard to find, at least where I live, but uh, picked up The Band. Um, the Band is, uh, was it, five members, four from uh, Canada, and one guy, I think, from Arkansas, uh, Levon Helms, uh, who just passed away. Um, but this is their, their second album, um, and this one is one of those albums where, you know, I listen to it, and maybe I'm not 100% thrilled with it, but from what I hear, it's music that are like, yeah, like, I like this. Um, and it's always cited as one of the greatest albums of all time, so you gotta have it. Um, you got Rag Mama Rag, The Night They Dribbled Dixie Down, one of my favorites on here, Up on Cripple Creek, um, Whispering Pines. So many great uh, songs on here, and one of those albums that I, you know what, I can probably say that this is one of my favorite albums, um, because it's sort of, you know, people tell you over and over it's one of the best albums of all time, and so when I listen to it, I, I keep thinking, yeah, yeah, it's really good, so I guess I kind of have to accept it as a, as a great album. I know that makes, may not make a lot of sense, but uh, it does to me. All right, next up we have uh, the Beach Boys. Now... I don't have pet sounds, and I'm, the reason why I don't have pet sounds is because I'm saving up for the pet sound sessions uh, box set. Um, no store that nearby me uh, that I know of has it, so I hope to order it online. Um, that comes with the album in mono and stereo and a bunch of outtakes. So I have sort of albums around uh, pet sounds, and I don't have the smile box set either. I really want that. Uh, and these are all the, um, what you would call the twofers. They're, since their albums were so short, you could just fit them on, you could fit two on one CD and they put bonus tracks at the end. So first up you have, uh, Little Deuce Coop and All Summer Long, both albums on this disc. Now, what do I want to say about the Beach Boys on, for this album? This album is still in that early Beach Boys vibe of... You know, very, very pretty pop songs that were sort of made to uh, be hits. You got, you know, I Get Around, which was a big hit. Um, be True to Your School. Uh, Little Deuce Coop, of course. Um, but the thing is that some of the production uh, on some of these songs, like, really show where these these guys could go. Um, you got Girls on the Beach, which is from the All Summer Long album. The production of that song is, like, really... 
it's still it's still it's still keeping it in that Beach Boys you know cute vibe, but it's bringing it into a more mature sound, uh, which you would of course it, it would explode on Pet Sounds. But this album is kind of like that that very first baby step um, in terms of these guys are making they are making incredible music, but making music that makes the critics uh, listen as opposed to just like young fans who go out and buy and buy the music. Really good. And then uh, you got the Beach Boys today and Summer Days and Summer Nights all on one disc. And again, you got uh, some bonus tracks on here. Now this album, especially these two albums, were they were right before Pet Sounds, nineteen sixty five, and this one is sort of similar to the Little Do Scoop in the sense that there are a lot of songs on here that are in that. Beach Boy vibe, but a lot more of these songs, as opposed to Little Do Scoop, are more mature songs. Uh, a bit, uh, the production is growing. Uh, you got songs like uh, Please Let Me Wander, uh, When I Grow Up To Be A Man, a very mature song. Um, Kiss Me Baby, that that the production of that song um, is just phenomenal. And even you got California Girls, which is always cited as one of the best Beach Boys uh, songs ever, and I totally have to agree. The lyrics, of course, are typical Beach Boys, early Beach Boys, but the production is like they're adding like orchestral sounds to this, and which would of course explode on Pet Sound. I know I said that before, but it's so true. This album is sort of like looking back in hindsight, you can you can look at this album and be like, yeah, like they were well, both of these albums. You can look back and say, yeah, they were they were onto something with with these albums. It's still but the the formula for a hit Beach Boys. Uh, album is still there, but they're, they're they're doing something. They're maturing, especially like I said with the song "When I Grow Up to Be a Man," and it's a really really kind of cool album to listen to. All right, so that's the end of the first stack. So let's get some water. Right. All right, let's keep going. Uh, you got the Beach Boys. This is after Pet Sounds. Um, Friends and 2020. Um, now this album, uh, to me, is really interesting and very good in the sense that um, Brian has sort of left the Beach Boys um, because he's had a nervous breakdown ever since Smile fell to pieces. Uh, these, album, th these two albums came afterward, and this shows the other members of the band really stepping forward and, and maturing a lot, realizing, hey, if Brian could do it, we could do it too, and they're actually writing like good songs. I mean, don't get me wrong. The early Beach Boys, you know, tracks are are are, are amazing, of course, uh, and really fun to listen to. But these are songs that, like, like a what are they like in their late twenties or early thirties when they make these songs? And these sound like songs that a twenty twenty year old and a thirty year old would have written. You know, not just to sell it, but like they're they're actually like reflections on life, um, and they're always cited as being like the great moments. Uh, these, these has great moments from Carl Wilson and, and Dennis Wilson, um, especially on Friends. Then on 2020, you got uh, some songs that were sort of uh, left over from the Smile Sessions, like uh, uh, Our Prayer and Cabin Essence. Cabin Essence is one of the strangest Beach Boy songs you'll ever hear, but it's so... like There's, some, there's something fun about it. It's, str it's, str it's strange, strangely fun, if that makes any sense. And then you got Do It Again, which was a hit for them. Do It Again, the very end is, is uh, Smile Less, the way they have like the, the wood shop sounds at the end of it. And just another another great Beach Boys album. The thing with these Beach Boys, these Beach Boys albums is that they kind of have to be listened to in chronological order because you're going from cute Beach Boys formula to actually, you know, good songs written by 20, 30-year-olds. 30, 30 so... And then the final Beach Boys album uh, that I have is the one they just put out called That's Why God Made the Radio. I've never played this, funny enough. This came out in 2012. I was just, just about to go to college. I was excited to hear that the Beach Boys were coming out with, with, new, with uh, new material. They were celebrating their 50th anniversary. Never played this. I don't think I even ever played the song That's Why God Made the Radio. I just, just never did. All right, really quickly. All right, now we're on to uh, the Beatles. And you can tell I'm excited because I got my Beatles shirt on. Um, now, again, well, just like the Beach Boys, I don't have some of the big titles. Uh, I don't have Sgt. Pepper, and I don't have the White Album. And you're kind of like, dude, why? Well, 
Ever since the remasters came out in, in 2009, I've been trying to collect those as much as I can. And now that it's been five years since those were released, they're kind of disappearing from stores. So if I come across a remaster that I don't have, I'm going to grab it. Of course, I could order them off of Amazon, but, you know, it's the Beatles, and, you know, I got to pick them off, off the shelves in the store. So these are the all the ones that I picked up from the store, and uh, they're all in chronological order. So let's begin. I'm running out of air a little bit here. Let's begin. You got Please Please Me, their debut album. And, and you know what? I actually go back to this album a lot. It's uh, Especially in the car, it's a lot fun to listen to. There's a lot of... Um, there's, there's a fun atmosphere going on in this, um, and this is essentially, uh, for the most part, is like their live club act recorded properly. You got like rousing numbers like, I saw her standing there, boys, uh, twist and shout, um, and then you got uh, seven, seven, there's 14 tracks, seven of them are covers, seven of the, seven of the other ones are uh, Len McCartney compositions. And you know what? I actually like a lot of the covers on here, except The Taste of Honey. I've never particularly liked that cover. It's always been kind of schmaltzy, and they're trying too hard to make it sound adult. I don't know, but I, I do play this album uh, a lot. Um, and it also shows that even for a debut album, these guys are already making uh, great songs. Like I said, I saw her standing there. Please Please Me, Love Me Do. Um, there's a place, like, really coming into themselves as songwriters, which of course they would just progress and progress as the albums uh, would go on. Actually, there's one album that I want to talk about, which I don't really think they, they progressed that much, but we'll get to that. So, please please me. Next you have With the Beatles, their second album. Now this, for I would I would probably call this Please Please Me Volume 2, in the sense that there's 14 songs, seven of, seven of them are covers, and seven are originals. And um, you could take songs from both these albums and you can sort of swap them you know put one track from this album onto this album for someone who's like a basic casual fan and like they wouldn't know a difference there's not like a huge change in production um the songwriting is a little bit more advanced you got george uh writing his first song on this album don't bother me uh you've got um so many great covers on here till there was you has always been one of my favorites um and even Hold Me Tight, which was a uh, an outtake from Please Please Me. Um, I've never particularly loved that song either, so that's why I said there are both there are, you know songs on both these albums that I love. Some of them I don't I don't, I don't really love. Um, but I, funny enough, I, I probably play Please Please Me a little bit more than with the Beatles. Plus, that you know I'd rather have like happy smiling Beatles on the cover than they're you know we're trying to be serious uh, Beatles, which I can respect. Uh, but you know what? You could take uh, this is not my least favorite Beatles albums. Even if you took the weakest link of the Beatle albums, it's still not, you know, a week of uh, the weakest link because, you know, they're the Beatles and, you know, pretty much it's, it's hard to, it's, it's really hard, especially for me to really criticize anything they've done. So that's with the Beatles. And the third album you have from them is a hard day's night. Um, this is, um, half the album are songs from their first movie, a hard day's night, which by the way, every Beatle fan, music fan, Rock and roll fan, movie fan should see a hard day's night, and then the other songs on here are kind of like miscellaneous uh, tracks from around that time. This one is pretty extraordinary because all the songs on this album are Lennon McCartney compositions. There are no covers on this one at all, um, and this and it really shows a a, a growth in uh, songwriting to me because you have uh, maybe not lyric wise, but like a lot of the things they use on this uh, this album, it's like the opening chord of a hard day's night, the opening chord of a hard day's night is just phenomenal. Um, they're really, I mean, I mean, what can I say about this uh, this, this album? Um, this album is re is really cool to listen to because um, they have written all the songs themselves, and it's one of those albums where uh, you get a sense of what these guys. What true Beatles sound, a tr true Beatles album sounds like when they get to that in the future. This album is, is, is the first taste of that. That's what I'm trying to say here. Because uh, there are no covers here, so everything is entirely Beatlesque, and you would get a lot more of that on, 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 on later albums. And then next up we have oh, Beatles for Sale. Probably my least favorite Beatles album. 
Um, well, Let It Be always gets tra gets trashed too, but not, probably this one I, I like a little less than Let It Be. Why do I like? Do I not like this album? Oh, I like the album. I do not love it. Let's put it that way. There are seven. There are fourteen tracks in here. Seven of them are covers. Like they've gone back. Hard Day's Night was all originals. Now they've gone back to doing, you know, covers and some of the the songs they do write to me are, for lack of a better word, lazy. But then again, you can take the laziest Beatles song in the world and you can still, you know, you know, tap your feet to it. Um, but this does show a little bit of a little bit of progression, not much. Uh, particularly the song "I'm a Loser." John is really starting to write more for himself, um, and just that's just that gloomy cover of the Beatles on the cover. It's just like it, it just looks like a lazy, lazy album. But it's still the Beatles, and they still got that charm about them. But they just look like uh, they just, they kind of just look like it's like. Uh, so that's kind of how I feel about this album. I, 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 I will put it on, I guess, to give it redemption. Um, and like, I, like I've, I've always said, you know, you could take the weakest Beatles album, which in my opinion is this one, um, and you're still going to listen to it. And then you have Help. Now, this one is a, a little bit uh, better than Beatles for Sale. You still have some covers on here, but you've only got uh, two covers. There are 14 tracks on here. Uh, the first seven tracks in this album are... Uh, songs from the movie Help, which again, every rock fan, music fan, Beatles fan, uh, maybe, yeah, movie fan should, should, should see Help. Really fun movie. The, the songs, the original, the, the songs that are used in this movie, I like better than the songs that are used in A Hard Day's Night. Because, at the same time, they're progressing as songwriters. You know, John's writing Help, a lot personal. Uh, You've Gotta Hide Your Love Away, very personal. Um... Ticket to Ride, of course, is so much fun. And then the miscellaneous tracks, the, uh, the latter half, they're, they're sort of a hodgepodge, but at the same time, they're very enjoyable songs, too. You Like Me Too Much, I've Just Seen a Face Yesterday. The only thing I have a problem with this album is that the album ends with Dizzy Miss Lizzy, which is a rockin' cover, but for heaven's sakes, guys, you put that after Yesterday, like one of the most beautiful songs ever, and it's kind of like, well, it's kind of like, how do you, how, how do you top that? Um... And uh, just a phenomenal album. And this was actually the first of, of the remasters that I ever got. So it kind of holds that uh, nostalgic vibe of me, you know, buying it and then picking up uh, the rest of the remasters. Uh, and then we have their uh, their fifth album, Rubber Soul. Um, now this is one of my favorite, probably my top five favorite Beatle albums. Um, this one is that is that stepping stone between everything getting weird and everything being extremely Beatlesque. These are all originals on here. You got George writing three songs on here. Uh, even Ringo gets a co-write on this album. Um, and what I really like about this album is that it really, it shows the Beatles for the first, not, not for the first time, because that was a hard day's night, but after this album, they were like a monster in the sense that after this album, um, starting with this album, I should say, Every single album had songs that were only written by them, and this is where they started from. So it still has that root in, like, poppy, Beatlesque uh, vibe, but very mature songs, too. You got uh, Michelle, Norwegian Wood, uh, phenomenal songs on here, In My Life. And this record is just, like, it all, it, it, it's really... Um, it, I have a really special place in my heart for this album because to me, I just kind of get a smile. Even though you know they're kind of looking lazy on the cover, the photo is uh, distorted, so it gives you a sense of these guys are really like they're onto something. Which would like, which like I said, would come in, in, in the later albums. And that would of course lead to Revolver, my personal favorite Beatles album, because this was this was really Rubber Soul set set the template. This established it in my opinion, because again, you got George writing three songs on here, Taxman, Love You Too, I Want to Tell You. So there's pop on this album, there's rock on this album, there's world music on this album, there's psychedelic music, there's backwards guitars, there's just, there's silly songs on here. You've got, this album to me is, is just everything that I love about the Beatles all summed up in, into one album. And I know you're thinking, hey, Sgt. Pepper's better. And you know what? Maybe it actually is a better album, but this one has always been has always been my favorite. Uh, both this one and Rubber Soul, by the way, I, you know, I remember hearing when I was a little kid, so they kind of, again, hold that uh, nostalgia vibe to it. Um, and just a phenomenal album. You know, I can sit and talk about this album for, you know, forever and ever and ever, but we got all these CDs to get to, so I'm going to put it down. 
So like I said, I have to skip over Sgt. Pepper because I don't have that one. I don't have the remaster that one. So the next one I have is Magical Mystery Tour. Um, this one really isn't so much an album as, this, as it is that the first half, I, again, are songs from the movie Magical Mystery Tour. Um, and then the other ones are singles and things that were out uh, at the time. Uh, because here in America, uh, we put all those onto this album. And I guess when the Beatles put this put their albums on CD, they realized, yeah, this works good as an album. Let's put it on CD. And you know what it really does? Um, you know, this one, t you know, is is a is a fun album to listen to because because the movie Magical Mystery Tour is is really wacky, um, and so you this album just feels like a lot of fun. Plus, you got like the animal suits on on the front. So it's, it's, it looks like it's going to be a fun time. you got Magical Mystery Tour. Uh, your, your mother should know. I'm the Walrus. Hello, goodbye. Strawberry Fields Forever. And again, we really, like, like talk about, you know, progressing as songwriters. I'm the Walrus, uh, Strawberry Fields Forever, Penny Lane. These are just, like, you know, classic, classic Beatle cuts. Um, so that's, yeah, that's Magical Mystery Tour. And then, like I said, I had to skip the White Album, uh, and I got to skip... The Yellow Submarine album. And so the last one that I have in terms of a remastered 2009 album is Abbey Road. Abbey Road is the perfect closing chapter. This was the last out complete album that they recorded. Not the last one they released. Um, that was Let It Be. Um, but this one just perfectly closes the the the, uh, the Beatle book. It's, it's, like, it's like they came together. No pun intended. They came together for for one last hurrah. And... 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 They got it right. There's just so much about this album. I listen to it, and I, I think about where this fits in the catalog, and I, I I I get a big smile on my face, and I just realize that hey, you know, all you know, even though they were the they are, even if they are the greatest band of all time, you know, they still couldn't last forever, and they they just hit it out of the park uh, with this la with this last album. Again, one of my top five favorite Beatle albums, and the remaster sounds really nice, and just a very a very enjoyable album. Plus the whole medley on side two is just phenomenal. Okay, the last two Beatles uh, albums that I have, uh, the Love soundtrack. Uh, this was the soundtrack to the Cirque du Soleil um, show Love that was made. Uh, George Martin and Giles Martin, George Martin was the original producer, took what was it, 26 Beatles songs, remixed them completely, um, and just made them you know, just brought them to life, kind of updated the songs and made them sound uh, as if they were just pulled straight from 1960 from, from the 1960s into when was this 2006? There's no cop. I can't find the copyright date, but I think that's about right. 2006. Um, and you know, I know some fans have a problem with this with with, with like all the backward sound effects and you know taking a taking a guitar solo from this song and putting it in this song. But to me, like as a Beatle fan, my I, I just get such a big you know smile on my face. My ear kind of explodes with all the different sounds I'm hearing, and I'm picking out you know individual s sounds uh, from from the Beatles. And just a very you know just just an, another in incredible uh, just. Uh, collection of Beatles songs, even though these are songs that I've heard for a thousand times, they still sound fresh and they still sound exciting to listen to. And, and even to this day, there are things that I listen to that maybe I've like forgotten about uh, or that I haven't heard yet. And so definitely, uh, definitely, and again, has that it definitely has that nostalgia vibe because like I bought this when it came out. You can even tell because the the case is kind of cracked here, and just. As they say in Mr. Kite, a splendid time is guaranteed for all. And then the last Beatle album that I have um, is kind of an odd one because I don't have its companion. This is The Beatles On Air, live at the BBC, Volume 2. I don't have Volume 1. Uh, volume 1 came remastered at the same time this came out in 2013. Um, I have the old uh, Volume 1 uh, from like 1994 uh, somewhere. But this is on air live at the BBC Volume 2. It's a, it's, it's a two CD set. I don't know if I can really show it too well on camera here. It's a two CD set. Those are where the discs are. Um, and this one, in my opinion, is structured a little bit um, better than the first one because you only got, like, at most you got, like, maybe four or five songs in a row. A lot of talking bits, and I love the talking bits as a Beatle fan. Uh, I really get such a, such a kick out of those. And... Um, 
And you know, and I actually like to listen to this because it's fun to hear the Beatles um, without any studio augmentation. Although a couple of the ones, I, a couple of tracks, I found out there's some like some overdubs and things like that. Uh, but to hear them as a band, like as you would actually go to hear them live. Plus, there are so many songs on here that they, they never got around to recording in, uh, in the studio. Things like Ray Charles' um, "I Got a Woman," Chuck Berry's "I'm Talking About You," the Hippie Hippie Shake, and. Um, and I have yet to hear the remastered volume one also. But if it sounds anything like, like this one, which the, the quality is just so clear, I'm looking forward to that. All right. Got to do a little bit of a, a little bit of stretch in here. My, foot, my feet are killing me here. So that's the end of the second pile. A little swig of water. All right, let's do this. Continuing on uh, in the bees. We have Blues Traveler 4. Uh, picked this up uh, for no more than a, maybe two bucks when I bought it. Um, everyone knows the track uh, Hook. Um, Emma Stone did a great lip sync version of that on Jimmy Fallon. Uh, Run Around. But I, ne but I never played this. I never played this. I bought this years ago. I want to say 2010 or 2011, but I just I never played it. I picked it up because a friend of mine was into the blues, and he recommended that I pick this album up. But, but I never played the album. Uh, next we have uh, the first two albums by Boston, uh, their self-titled debut album and Don't Look Back. Um, I have heard the self-titled debut album much more than I've heard Don't Look Back. I don't actually, I don't think I've ever actually played Don't Look Back. I, I've played the, the song Don't Look Back and uh, It's Easy. I may have heard once or twice. The price tag, of course, is a little ripped on here. But Boston, the first album, is phenomenal. This came out in 19, 1976, and these guys, uh, uh, led by uh, Tom Schultz, these guys really took a lot of things that we love about rock music and just, I don't know, like, kicked it in the ass or something. Just amazing songs, more than a feeling, peace of mind, foreplay long time, smoking. Uh, some people think the... The album kind of dies down at the end, but I like something about you and let me take you home tonight. Just incredible, incredibly, like dense, deep rock sounds on this album, which I'm sure this one has has it too. But I've just I've never played this one because I just I I always go back to this one. Um, plus the, the 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 front covers with the two with the spaceships on it just it adds to that mysteriousness of like yeah these are you know these guys are making great music. Uh, the next I... Oh, God. <laughs> next is Michael Bolton. <laughs> Greatest Hits 1985 to 1995. I bought this for one song. One song I bought this for. And this is not a, a really well-known Michael Bolton song. But I bought this for Steel Bars. Because it's a song that he wrote with Bob Dylan. And I'll get to, 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 to Bob in a minute. But, again, I've, 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 never, I've never really played this. And I, I, I... Like, Michael Bolton's innocent enough. Like... At least, at least in my ears, I know that there are a few people that don't, oh, that don't like him. Look at that face. He he just he just he just he just wants to be loved. But uh, yeah, can't really say anything else about that. All right, now we got Bowie, David Bowie. I have three albums and one compilation. Um, and again, I don't have everything, so I don't have Low or Station to Station or a Space o Space Oddity. Uh, but I do have um, two of his classic albums, uh, and they're both in the 30th anniversary two CD uh, little books that they, they come in, the little two CDs. They are The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust and The Spiders from Mars, and Aladdin Sane is follow-up. Ziggy Stardust, this was... I'm, I'm trying to think here. Oops, it's sliding out here. I, I bought a really bad used co copy of it, so the booklet it kind of has to keep sliding out. Um... This came out in 1972, um, and this was Bowie's, I want to say it was either his third or fourth album, but this really established himself as a true artist. Um, the, f the first two albums, Space Oddity and Man, uh, Man Who Sold the World, and his self-titled debut album, gosh darn it, they um, they had some followings, but this was really the album that really expl made him explode and gave him that whole Ziggy Stardust vibe and really kind of gave birth to, uh, to theater rock. Which, of course, bands like Kiss and um, Alice Cooper and Black Sabbath, they would be doing. Um, 
this this is it's a pretty short album. It's only about maybe half an hour long. It tells the story about a rock star, uh, Ziggy Stardust, coming from uh, Mars to bring rock and roll to Earth. But I have to warn you, if you want to look up the story, like go look it up on Wikipedia or go Google it, because I to this day I, I don't know the complete story. But I, I love the songs. Five Years Solo, Moon, Moon Age Daydream, Starman. Those are only the, the first four songs. Then you got later on, you got Hang On to Yourself, Ziggy Stardust, Suffragette City, Rock and Roll Suicide. And then, of course, this comes with, with a second disc with a whole bunch of uh, outtakes and B sides and uh, alternate mixes and early versions of songs. Ziggy Stardust, it's a classic album. Um, like I said, gave birth to, 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 to theater rock and uh, it really was. Uh, one of the great records of the seventies that was that was uh, could, could, could tell a story, uh, but the story, like I said, it really doesn't get any more developed than that. As the fact that he comes to Earth to bring rock and roll to the children, and he doesn't really have a good ending. And then his follow-up, Aladdin Sane, which most Bowie fans would actually consider his very best album, because, like I said, Ziggy Stardust uh, really helped him explode. And then Aladdin Sane was an album that made him, we're like, yeah, he's not going anywhere. Incredible songs. Again, this is the two-disc set. Uh, the first disc is the album. The second disc is like a bunch of single stuff and uh, some some live cuts. And I really love this album. In fact, I... I I not more. I don't play this album more than Ziggy Stardust. I play this just as as much as Ziggy Stardust. This one I don't think gets that much credit as, as Ziggy Stardust does. You've got incredible like these are. This is not a concept album, but a lot of the songs on here are just like you're getting this the beginning of what would become classic Bowie '70s signature sounds. I hope that makes sense to you. You got Watch That Man, uh, so of my favorites, Drive In Saturday, Panic in Detroit. Um, even his sloppy cover of Let's Spend the Night Together, it's like sloppy, but he's still keeping it um, faithful enough. And he, it, it's, 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 a, it's a lot of fun. And just, again, Bowie writing great Bowie songs. There's no story here. And this was to prove that he's not going anywhere. Uh, I'll, I'll save the compilation after I talk about this one. This is his l most recent album, uh, and his first one in over 10 years, called The Next Day. This is the deluxe edition with the three bonus tracks. I haven't bought the newest deluxe edition or even the, the new tracks that were on that newest edition. Um, and this... Uh, I never played this one either. I really didn't. I, 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 I got scared by a lot of reviews that said, you know, yeah, it's great that Bowie's back, but, you know, he's, you know, the production maybe is not that great, or the volume's too hot, or Bowie's writing great songs, but he has nothing to prove. And I kind of just got scared and, and just, and never actually listened to this album. It's a shame. I really should. I, I listened to Aladdin saying when I got, and I got this after next day, and I play this immediately. So, I guess... I'll have to go and listen to it then. And then the compilation album that I have is the uh, David Bowie Best of 1974 to 1979. And the reason why I have this is that this, uh, as of now, covers all the songs from albums of his that I don't have. Including Sound and Vision, uh, Young Americans, um, Golden Years, Fame. Um, it covers a lot of the albums of his that I don't have yet, but this will do it in, in the meantime. It's an incredible uh, collection. Plus you get a cover of... Um, of Bruce Springsteen's It's Hard to Be a Saint in the City. Haven't played this all the way through, but I, I played it for the highlights, the, the tracks that I was familiar with already, like I said, Sound and Vision, Golden Years, Fame, Young Americans, um, and I have yet to hear all like the remaining tracks uh, on here. But uh, if it's anything like those four, then I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing it. All right, we're just about finished with, uh, with the bees here. So you got Garth Brooks, Rope in the Wind, uh, don't look for this on iTunes because Garth Brooks doesn't have anything up there, so you, you got to pick this up uh, in the stores or at a used uh, record shop. Never played this one either. I think I, you know, I think I played Shameless, his cover of Billy Joel's Shameless, which actually was a hit for him, and so Billy Joel had a country hit. But I never played this. I know I should because it's, it, I see this on you know best of albums list. I think I bought it for that reason, just to have it, but I never played it. All right, then we got one, two, three, three albums from Jackson Brown. You have Late for the Sky. Uh, it's only, there's only eight tracks, but no track uh, runs shorter than three minutes and 50, uh, sorry, three minutes and four seconds. So you got tracks here that are six minutes long, five minutes long. Um, and 
I, I just I, I I could never get through uh, this album. I, I I put this on this album on a number of times, and I never really got past the second track, Fountain of Sorrow. I guess it's I don't know too long. Jackson Brown's a really great singer. Like he's not whining in any of his songs or anything like that. But it's just I don't know what it is. It's just. Maybe I would like Jackson Brown better if I heard like his greatest hits or something before I delved into the albums. I don't know. Then you have The Pretender, uh, which I've heard the track The Pretender. Uh, this also had a hit of his called Here, Here Comes Those Tears Again, but I never heard that one. And I never heard the rest of the album either. And then the final Jackson Brown album I have is a live album, uh, Running On Empty, uh, featuring the phenomenal track Running On Empty. Um, another fan favorite, Stay. But... His, I'm, I'm repeating myself. I never heard Stay. I never heard the rest of the album. Except for Running on Empty. This was a live album. And you're like, you're, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Tom, why'd you pick those up then? Well, I picked these up. They're, they were very cheap. Jackson Brown doesn't sell for a whole lot of money. Plus, especially like, if you have, you know, greatest uh, albums of all time lists, usually one of these three or all three appear on that list. So I kind of feel like I gotta have them. Jackson Brown's innocent enough, but I, I, I need to sit down and, and listen to them. And then the final B uh, artist I have here is The Birds, their self, uh, not self-titled, their debut album, Mr. Tambourine Man. Really, really good album. Um, you would get more of a Birds progression as their albums would go on, from what I've heard. I don't own any of those albums, but albums later would be things like Fifth Dimension, uh, the Notorious Bird Brothers, uh, Sweetheart of the Ro Rodeo. But this album is a you know, really nice debut album. Features a lot of covers of Bob Dylan songs, Mr. Tambourine Man, Spanish Harlem Incident, uh, All I Really All I Really Want to Do, Times of Freedom, and then a, a bunch of songs that the Birds uh, had had written, um, sort of as a, as an idea that they wrote these, I guess, because they didn't want to do a whole album of, of Dylan covers, um, and a lot of the songs they wrote here are really good. Uh, I especially like Here Without You, It's No Use, which is actually one of my favorites. Uh, we'll Meet Again, which is a cover of a 1920s uh, Vera Lynn song. Or was it 30s? Um, but it's, it's looked back, and plus, you know, for those who don't like Bob Dylan, th this album makes his songs li listenable. Uh, and, it's got a, and it's got a lot, lots of bonus tracks. And, and this album makes, makes me want to go pick up the rest of their albums. But I still haven't done that yet. All right. We got to do a little bit more stretching. We just finished three piles here, so we'll get a little swig of water. All right, let's do this. Let's move on to the C's. You got uh, two George Carlin albums, uh, Place for My Stuff and uh, What Am I Doing in New Jersey. Two comedy albums. Only heard a few uh, pieces from this one. Actually, I've only heard none from this album that I can remember, and only one from this album. Don't know why I picked these up, though. All right, moving on. You got Johnny Cash and Willie Nelson. Uh, VH1 Storytellers together. Um, again, I picked this up, and I like Johnny Cash, and from what I've heard Willie Nelson, I like him, but I've never, never given, never kept giving this a listen. Again, I probably picked this up because it was really cheap somewhere. Uh, and I know you're probably thinking, dude, where's, uh, at Folsom Prison, where's the American Recordings? Well, the American Recordings are hard to find in stores. And at Folsom Prison, I'm trying to get, like, the special uh, two-CD DVD set. Uh, Ray Charles, Genius Loves Company. And I know you're thinking, dude, where are all your other Ray Charles albums? Well, again, I'm sa saving my money for those, and, and those are some of them are actually hard to find. But this is a duets album uh, that came out uh, kind of shortly before he died, 2004. I think he died in 06. Um, and this was another case of, you know, the album's really cheap somewhere. Pick it up. I like Ray Charles from what I've heard. Don't think I've actually played this any more than just uh, "Here We Go Again," the duet with with Nora Jones. Something I am. All right, then we have "Cheap Trick," "Heaven Tonight." Bought this for one song, "Surrender." Um, I know another fan favorite is "On Top of the World." Never heard, never heard the rest of this. I probably picked it up because it's really cheap. It has "Surrender," one of my favorite Cheap Trick songs on it. So the album's probably good. Cheap trick, heaven tonight. Man, the seeds are like all the uh, mediocre. I don't know. Clarence Carter, slip away and other hits. This was made by a company called Flashback Records, and I like Flashback Flashback Records. They take an artist, 
They put 10 songs on here. They give you their absolute biggest hit, and they, 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 they pad it out with other hits. Sometimes they're done justice, and sometimes they're not. Um, but Clarence Carter, I, again, picked this up because it's really cheap. Played Slip Away. Um, I don't really actually know why I bought this. Slip Away is not really one of my favorite all-time R&B songs. I mean, I like it. Uh, he's got a great voice. And I guess I picked this up because I, I heard it somewhere, and I had some money to spend. Man, these CDs are really driving me crazy. I mean, it's nice that I can get through this pile pretty quickly. Then you have... Oh. <laughs> no, okay, heads up. This is a good album, but the packaging that I bought this... And I bought this used on, used on Amazon, and now I'm always cautious when I bought this on Amazon. This is Eric Clapton's Slow Hand. Now, and if you look very carefully at the packaging, this is a packaging for, like, like a, a library copy. Which is probably exactly where I bought this from without even knowing it. So now I'm really cautious whenever I go to buy on Amazon. But you got Eric Clapton's Slow Hand. This was, this was a, a complete return to form for him. You have um, some of his best known songs on here. Cocaine, Wonderful Tonight, Lay Down Sally. And even the, the, next, even the, the lesser known tracks. Next Time You See Her, uh, The Core, and Peaches and Diesel. Like very, very strong, very good uh, Eric Clapton tracks. Uh, and I especially want to get rid of this because... Uh, just a few, was a few years ago, 2012 or 2013, there was a 35th anniversary uh, set, which included like a two CD live thing, some some outtakes and and, a re and the record in it also. And I want to get that, mainly because I, I want to get rid of this. The sound quality in the CD is really nice though, but it, it's, it's kind of embarrassing to just keep this library copy in here. Then you have Eric Clapton, August. This was an 80s album uh, produced by Phil Collins. Um, also features uh, Tina Turner on the track Tearing Us Apart. It's also got his track It's In The Way That You Use It and Missed You on here. Other than those I ne other than those tracks, I never played this album. And I don't know why. I'm a, I'm a big Eric Clapton fan. I've seen him in concert. And I have a lot of his albums. But I don't have a lot of his classic 70s albums. And to me, I'm kind of thinking, dude, self-titled album, 461 Ocean Boulevard. And again, I'm saving up for the deluxe editions of, of those. So I, I, so I pick up I pick up these... Uh, whenever I get the chance. And plus, his albums, especially from the 1980s on, don't sell for a lot of money. Um, so you can pick them up pretty cheap. And so I have yet to hear more of these. Maybe after this video, I'll sit down and I'll have like an Eric, an Eric Clapton and uh, what was the other artist? Jackson Brown Marathon. Same thing with his next album, Journeyman. Uh, the big hits from this were Pretending and Bad Love. Uh, you also had tracks Before You Accuse Me, which has uh, become a fan favorite. Um... Running on Faith, which the Unplugged performance is phenomenal. By the way, I don't have Unplugged in this set because I want to get the deluxe edition that came out last year. Or 2013. And then you got uh, Old Love, which is a phenomenal track. And then Run So Far, a track that was written by his friend George Harrison, who George would later do his own version on his album Brainwash. But I don't have that album in here. But again, never heard the rest of the album. But I, like Eric, but I really like Eric Clapton, so why haven't I given this a listen already? Then you have, boy, the Clapton just keeps coming and coming. From the Cradle, an album of blues songs that uh, Clapton did. Um, and I think I've heard Motherless Children on this album and then nothing else. It was another one of those things where I bought this album for a very cheap price because I like Clapton, but never played him. I know I'm, I sound like a broken record, but it's just, just shows how, how, how you know much of a fan I am. Then you have Reptile. Uh, I bought this because it was on sale. Never played it. Although it's got I ain't, it's got a song written by, written by Stevie Wonder. I want to say it's, I I ain't gonna stand for it. And there's a cover of James Brown's "Don't Let Me Lonely Let Me Be Lonely Tonight." I haven't heard those. And then the final Clapton album. I bought this actually when it came out because I was going to see him on tour for this album. This is Eric Clapton "Old Suck." Now this album. Again, I've only heard the first half of it because, but even the first half isn't that interesting to me because this shows that Eric Clapton's not really so much a rock person as he is an old man still making music. And you know what? I respect that. The music in here is innocent enough. It has a Clapton vibe to it because he is playing guitar, but it's not, you know, there's no Layla on this album. There's no I Shot the Sheriff. Like, there's nothing that's really rocking on this album. And you got like All of Me, not the John Legend song, but the, the Billie Holiday track with Paul McCartney uh, doing the guest vocals on it. And the album didn't sell very well. And when I saw him live, he did Gotta Get Over. That's a, that's a rocking track. He played that live 
And he played Goodnight Irene, an old uh, tune, tune from the, what was it, like 20s or 30s. And this album just, just didn't have it. I, I still haven't heard the second half of the album. I mean, just look at it. Just, just, uh, our love is here to say that, that that's, another, that's another Billie Holiday song. All um, right, then. I got a message on my phone. I'm going to check that real quickly. All right. Nothing special. All right. Let's keep going. This is uh, still in this in the C pile, but this C, but this uh, pile of C artists are ones that I have uh, heard. Starting off with, uh, I'm proud that I own this. The Clash London Calling 25th Anniversary Legacy Edition. It's a two. I'm trying if I, if I can open this up right. It's a two CD. Uh, oh, this CD, I have I have it in another case. Two CD and one DVD. I haven't really watched the DVD. I think I put it in once to watch the London Calling video, and I haven't watched the, re the rest of it. But it's the London Calling album, and then disc two is something called the Vanilla Tapes. Previously unreheard, unreheard, previously unheard rehearsal sessions, including five new songs. But I never really played that disc. It's got a cover of Bob Dylan's The Man and Me. But I never played it. But I've played the album a number of times. The Clash, London Calling, gotta love it. It's punk, but it's reggae punk. It's classic rock punk. It's it's punk, but done in, in a very listenable style. You got London Calling, uh, Lost in the Supermarket, Clamp Down, The Guns of Brixton, uh, and of course, uh, Train in Vain. Great album. Uh, and then, I say as I try to uh, stretch here. You got The Clash Combat Rock. Uh, I bought this for one song, Should I Stay or Should I Go. Um, it's also got Rock the Casbah and Straight to Hell, uh, two really good songs. But I never heard the rest of the album. It was an another cl classic Tom example where he buys an album on sale because he thinks he's going to listen to it because uh, he likes one or two songs from it and he never plays it. So that's The Clash Combat Rock. I should probably after this video. I should probably. I, I, I can make. A, I should make a list of all the albums that I haven't heard yet but that I'm going to because because if, if I really don't like it, hey, I could sell it. and I could get a good price off of it. Uh, Coldplay, A Rush of Blood to the Head. Uh, I don't have their Parachutes album. That one's actually hard to find, at least where I live. This is Rush of Blood to the Head. Um, you've got classic Clocks. Um, God put a smile upon your face. Uh, the Scientist. Green Eyes, which is a track I've heard off here that I really like, but I never, but I haven't heard the rest of the album. Also, can anybody tell me what the front cover is supposed to be? Like to this day, I, I'm just like, I don't really know. Then you have Coldplay X and Y. I haven't heard this one. I've only heard Fix You and Speed of Sound. Like really, the big, the big hits from this album. I haven't played the rest of it, and. And I kind of want to trade this one because there's evidently there's a version of like a bonus disc there somewhere. But I picked I picked this up because I didn't know that existed. But I, it's nice that I have it in my collection, but I haven't heard it yet. And that's all the Coldplay I have. I've heard Viva La Vida, uh, Milo Zoloto, is that what it's called? And then I started listening to Ghost Stories, their most recent album. But I haven't, fin I haven't finished listening to that one. All right, now we got Phil Collins. Now, I don't have face value on CD because I, I had it. Um, and my dad used to have it, but I never bought my own copy of it. So I have the other remaining albums uh, from him. I have Hello, I Must Be Going. Uh, I picked this up, it was on sale, bought it for You Can't Hurry Love, his cover of The Supremes. It's also got a, a song called I Don't Care Anymore. But I haven't heard that and I haven't heard the album. But I bought it because it's on sale. No Jacket Required, I have heard this album. This album is really uh, proving that Phil Collins um, can make good and successful music. This album uh, was a Grammy winner for Album of the Year. Um, you've got Susudio, uh, which has you know huge 80s production on it. Um, but you know what? It, it, it fits the song. One More Night, not the Maroon 5 song. Don't Lose My Number, Who Said I Would, actually one of my favorites. And Take Me Home, probably in my top five Phil Collins tracks. Plus you got Peter Gabriel singing back up on that. And it's just it's just a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal track. I just like how he's looking at you, all, all blood red and that. Why did I play this album and not the other ones? Then you have Phil Collins, But Seriously. Again, this was on sale. I bought this for uh, the song I Wish It Would Rain Down. 
something happened on the way to heaven, uh, another day in paradise, and that's it. I haven't heard the rest of the album, and I bought it on sale. This album, Testify, came out in 2000, either 2000 or 1990s. It doesn't have the date on the back. Sorry, my eyes itching here. Bought this for his song, Can't Stop uh, Loving You. And that's it. Didn't he, I haven't even heard Wake Up Call. Haven't even heard Testify or anything else. Can't Stop Loving You is pretty, it's kind of an okay song, actually. Not one of my favorites. And you have The Best of Alice Cooper, Mascara, and Monsters. I bought this because I didn't want to buy Alice Cooper's Greatest Hits because those 10 songs are all on here and there's 12 others. Um, but now I'm tempted to buy more of Alice Cooper's albums because a lot of the track, especially there's uh, one, two, three, four, I think there's five tracks on here from his album Billion Dollar Babies. And that makes me kind of want to go get the album too. And also, I'd also like to get his album "Love It to Death," but I need to hear. But I need need to hear more of this. I, I, I've always found Alice Cooper interesting because when I was a kid, I thought he was really evil and really nasty, and he still kind of is. But as I get older, I see that's part of the act, and it doesn't scare me anymore. And plus, you know, I'm interested in hearing, you know, what music does he write? He's not just a scary figure; he writes music. But I gotta listen to it. I gotta listen more to it. Plus, you know, I love Schools Out. Who do, who doesn't? All right. Uh, Finishing up the C's, uh, hopefully. We got Counting Crows, August and Everything After, their first album. Funny enough, if you look at the cover, in the background are the lyrics to the song, August and Everything After, but that doesn't appear on this album. I have heard songs from this album, using the pun, time and time again. That's one of the songs on here. Uh, I, how many times have I heard Round Here, Omaha, Mr. Jones, uh, Rain King, Sullivan Street, Ghost Train, A Murder of One. And that's really it. I haven't heard the rest of the tracks. I guess because I've heard the other ones so many, so many times, I just, I, I just want to put this album down, and I will. Plus, there's a two CD deluxe edition, which I might buy. This is Counting Crows. This, this was, the, this was their follow up. This Desert Life. Um, yeah, never played this either. It's got Mrs. Potter's Lullaby, which is uh, one of their most well known songs. Never played this one either. Now, I don't even own or never even heard their greatest hits, films about ghosts. I should probably start there. Although I have heard their cover, Big Yellow Taxi. I mean, how could I not? All right, Cream, one of my uh, one of my favorite bands ever, and one of those bands that reminds me of like junior high and high school, just because I I listened to, I listened to uh, to them a lot. But I don't have. This is again kind of pathetic. I only have two albums from theirs, and the two albums that. One of them is one you'd expect, and the other one is one that you wouldn't. I don't have just really gears, because I think my father had a copy of it, and I want to buy the deluxe edition. I don't have fresh cream, because I want to buy the remaster, and I don't have the box set, Those Were the Days, because not only Those Were the Days contains all of the albums, plus a lot of like other stuff in it. So, but the two albums I do have, Wheels of Fire, probably my, probably alongside with just really gears, my favorite cream album. I, a lot of people like fresh cream, and I like it, but this one just does something more for me. Uh, first disc is all is all studio tracks, and the second disc is all live stuff. Uh, you got Crossroads, classic, Born Under a Bad Sign, just really just just really gears, Deserted Cities of the Heart. Those were the days. Politician, even the silly press rat and Warthog, I love. And my absolute favorite Cream song of any album is White Room, which is on this album. It kicks off the album, and it just makes the listening experience just so much better. I love listening to Cream because it puts me back of when I was in middle school and high school and beginning to discover, you know, actual music as opposed to what was popular on the radio. And then the other one that you probably wouldn't expect I have is Live Cream. They did a second volume to this, to this one. I don't have it, but I want to. This has four tracks, four live tracks, and then one studio track, Lottie Mama, which would turn into their song Strange Brew. Um, and you know what? I, I think I played this maybe once and I never played it again. Um, because you got NSU, which is over 10 minutes, Sweet Wine, which is over 15 minutes, and the other two are over 6 minutes. And I guess, I guess when I was younger, when I bought this, you know, I wanted to hear, like, more songs, so I didn't want to listen to the long extended jams, but I'll need to go back and listen to it. Alright, now, again, another band that really, um, reminds me of middle school and high school is Crosby, Stills, and Nash. This is their debut album, self-titled debut album, with bonus tracks, um... 
what do I what do I want to say about this album? This album, uh, when I heard this album, I, I only heard Sweet Judy Blue Eyes, and when I heard that, I played that over and over and over and over and over and over, and then I heard the rest of the album. <laughs> um, I, I guess when I realized that you could have three guys, I was in the middle school choir at the time. There's only there was only I think twelve guys, but you have three guys and they they harmonize and they they, they make them sound like a full a full band. Just those three guys, they sound like a, they sound like a choir. And I guess at that young age, it, it blew my mind. And I just I remember I tried to get some of their songs to sing in the middle school choir, and of course nobody knew who they were. Um, and just one of my absolute favorite favorite albums plus the I, I just love that cover because the album has that feeling of just you know yeah you're just like lounging at home and but you have a guitar and you have your buddies so yeah we'll you know we we'll, won't just do a sing-along you know we'll do uh you know we'll write some songs and really good songs too so definitely get definitely check this one out now i don't have deja vu but i really want that one that one's hard to find also where i live and then the other two albums, CSN and Daylight Again, those are to me are kind of like okay-ish albums. I don't, I don't love them as much as I love this one and Deja Vu, but I still want to get those. And I've, I've heard, I've heard them, of course. I think my dad owned a copy of them. So the other Crosby, Stills, Nash album that I have is uh, something that came out in two thousand nine called Demos. And funny enough, if, if you look at the back cover, only one of these songs is actually Crosby, Stills, and Nash, which is Marrakesh Ex uh, Express. The other ones are solo tracks, uh, solo demos. Um, I, I think Neil Young's on, on one of these. Yeah, Neil Young's on one of these. And a lot of these were songs that never appeared on Crosby, Stills, and Nash albums. Um, but very interesting to listen to. I definitely need to go back and listen to this one again. Um, I bought this in the shops when it came out because I was a fan. And I would... I'd like to hear that. I'd like to hear these again. I love these songs. I'd like to hear them in their demo version. And then David Crosby had a solo album that I picked up called A Thousand Roads. I think I bought this because my record store had it on sale. Um, he, he worked with this album. He worked on this album with Phil Collins. Um, I want to say I bought this for a song, but I can't remember. I think it was Hero I bought this for. But I, I can't remember how Hero goes. I never heard the rest of the album. Plus Phil Collins is on it, so why haven't I heard it yet? And then you have... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> getting some women in, the, in this uh, list. The very best of Sheryl Crow. I remember this album from when I was in high school. I remember playing these songs because I imagine Sheryl Crow was big on the radio in, in, in the 90s and early 2000s. So this is pretty much like all of her songs in, in one album. And I don't think I ever really need to hear any, any more uh, than this. I know her albums are super cheap now, so maybe if I come across them, I'll grab them. Kind of like what I've done with these. But... So many great songs. All I want to do is suck up the sun. Like, like just those songs that remind me of when I was in high school. Even though I was in high school in the 2010s, and this is all like 90s songs. First Cause the Deepest, Cat Stevens song. Every Day is the Winding Road, Strong Enough, Change Will Do You Good. Yeah, just just good, just good memories. Haven't heard them all, but good memories. Now, this is an album that I desperately want to want to change. Uh, my, my copy of. This is Dire Straits Brothers in Arms. I don't know if you can read this, but this is a, a German CD copy of it. I bought this off Amazon thinking I was going to get the best version of, of this album, and someone sent me this. And while I do... What songs are on here? Money for Nothing. That's all I've heard, actually. There's, there's nine songs. I guess because the sound quality is not that great that I just kind of just shy, I shied away from this completely. But I really want to get the remastered version, the American remastered version, as opposed to this. Dire Straits, Brothers in Arms. I'll listen to it when I get a good sounding copy. I've, I've judged it based off money for nothing, and this doesn't sound that great on this CD. Uh, oh, and another female artist, uh, the Dixie Chicks, Wide Open Spaces. Bought this because I've seen I've seen it on like one of those like I think only one best of albums. I saw this, picked up, was on sale. Never played it. It doesn't even have the two songs that I'm familiar of theirs with, uh, Traveling Soldier and what's the other one? Not Ready to Make Nice. Neither of those are on this album. Uh, and then we get to hey the Doobie Brothers. You got. Uh, two. I'm trying to get this right. Two low, two two low street, two low street. It's the it's the one with listen to, to the music and rocking down the highway, 
and Jesus is just alright. That's all I've heard from this album. Ten songs. Dewey Brothers, you know, class. I, I've heard their greatest hits. You know, they're a classic, um, classic rock act from the 70s. You know, they they had that sound, kind of like Bad Company of 70s radio. But man, I've never heard more than... Uh, these are albums again were on sale, but I never heard more than just those three tracks on this album. Same thing with this album, Captain and Me, which uh, I see on a lot of, like, this is probably the best Dewey Brothers album, that, according to some people, but I haven't heard it yet. only heard Long Train Common, China Grove, uh, South City Midnight Lady, like most people would. Without you, I think I heard once or twice. But I gotta give these albums, like, an actual, I, I own these albums, I gotta give them a listen. All right, last one in this pile is uh, the, Do the Doobie Brothers, Taken Into the Street. This is with uh, Michael McDonald, uh, the, the tracks taking it to the street and it keeps you running has that 80s when, when was this 76 but it has it has 80s sounds on it or like 80s keyboard sounds on it like can, can someone explain why 80s sound keyboards are on an album from 1976 plus Michael McDonald like Dewey Brothers were a hard rocking band and Michael McDonald came in and they, they changed to like pop which is nothing wrong like those are fine to listen to but the Doobie Brothers? Come on, man. All right, that's all for one, two, three, four, five, six, six piles. Wow, I'm actually quite impressed. And I ain't no swig of water. All right. All right, let's do this. Next one, you got The Door, self-titled album. Uh, this was, uh, came out in 2000, uh, 1967. This, this CD actually came out in, six, in 2007 with bonus tracks. This to me, okay, I gotta give you my quick backstory on The Doors. I've heard The Doors music in so many like 60s uh, films, um, Break On Through to the Other Side, Light My Fire, Soul Kitchen. You can't go wrong with those. But this whole album is just, like The Doors were like a, a ground, um, they laid the ground for like poetry, for like poetry combined with music combined with drugs. That's how you would best sum up, sum up the Doors, in my opinion. Their first album is all about that. Some great image imagery, especially on the Crystal Ship. Uh, even Backdoor Man, their cover of the Willie Dixon song "The End," which uh, I haven't seen Apocalypse Now, but I know it was used in great effect to that. And this album especially gave me some things. That I never heard before. Not only some tracks I never heard before, but also for anybody who's familiar with the track "Break On Through" to the other side, there's a bit where Jim Morrison goes, "Everybody loves my baby. She gets, she gets, she gets." Oh. Well, on this CD, you find out what he was saying. They actually like went back to the original tapes, and he's saying, "She gets high. She gets high. She gets high." And to me, that's a revelation. It still is a revelation when I hear it. The Doors' self-titled debut album. Listen to it. Don't have any other Doors albums because I want to get the remasters with the bonus tracks. I haven't gotten those yet. Uh, the Drifters, all-time greatest hits. Now these guys were, what was it, late 50s, early 60s. They had a lot of great uh, and a lot of popular songs. Under the Boardwalk, um, Up on the Roof, There Goes My Baby, Save the Last Dance for Me, Money Honey. I think I've only played, I, 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 I bought this because I don't think... Did the Drifters ever make albums? I don't actually know. But I bought this because they're one of those bands that I, I, I kind of... not They're not so much a band as they are a vocal group. They're, they're one of those groups that I always hear that I need to hear like pre-rock and roll. And so I bought The Greatest Hits. It wasn't a lot of money. And there's ten songs and, I, and I've only heard five of them. Maybe when I get older, when my ears start to decay, I'll listen to, to it more. And then we get to... Uh, Got a lot of albums here, so this is gonna take a while. And we got Bob Dylan. Now, again, I don't have a lot of, I don't have everything Dylan. In fact, it's kind of a hodgepodge of what I do have uh, from Dylan, because some albums that you would expect that I have, I don't, and some that you wouldn't expect, I do. Uh, and also, there are some albums that I want to trade because I found out that there are some albums that are available in like SACD and 5.1, and I'm like, yeah, I want those. So we'll start with this one. This is The Times They Are Changing. His third album includes the, the song The Times They Are Changing. This one's not available in 5.1, so I'm glad I have this CD. Um, when the Ship Comes In, Only a Pawn in Their Game. This is Dylan, probably the very last album of his in that protest uh, song vein. Uh, but in his next album, Another Side of Bob Dylan, the name explains it all. You would get more 
like more sophisticated songs, like as opposed to just you know protest song, protest song, protest song. This song, this album has a has a lot of them. Probably every single one now that I think about it. But I haven't heard this album in a long, long time. I need to go back and listen to it. The album I have heard a lot of his is this one, Highway 61 Revisited, classic album. This one, th before this, Dylan had Bringing It All Back Home, which I really want to get on, on SACD in 5.1. I want to get this one on 5.1 Surround Sound, too. Um, that album was half classic Dylan and half electric new side Dylan. This album completely exploded. This is like Dylan's pet sounds in a way. He completely exploded with this. It's pretty much all electric. You can still get some acoustic on here, but Dylan's, he's not writing any more protest songs. Well, I shouldn't say that. Like a Rolling Stone is probably his biggest middle finger to his fans, to the critics. And to me, it's just, I, I get a kick every time I hear it. And then the rest of the album's not bad, not bad either. Uh, I should say, no, it's really great. Um, even if the lyrics don't make a lot of sense, the middle finger in the beginning kind of sets the tone that you don't know what the heck the direction this album's going to go in. But I don't care. I'm Bob Dylan. I'm going to do what I want. And I, I respect that. And I love this album. I don't understand a lot of this album, but I love it. Uh, now we're jumping a lot of years. Don't I don't have Blonde on Blonde. I want to get the 5.1. Don't have Blonde on the Tracks. I want to get the 5.1. There's so many There's so many excuses why I don't have the album. Because I want to get the 5.1 surround sound discs. So the next one I do have is Infidels from 1983. I've heard two tracks from this. No, three tracks from this album. Joker Man, Sweetheart Like You, and Man of Peace. I haven't heard the rest of it. Um... But you know what? I love Dylan, so I bought it. It was on sale. And you know what? If, if I love Dylan as much as I love Clapton and Phil Collins, I should give this album a listen. And I'm going to put it on the list of albums I should listen to when I'm done with this video. Then we're jumping, again, a lot of years to 2001. He had Love and Theft, which came out. A lot of people love this album. I haven't heard uh, all of it. I've heard, actually, most of it now that I'm looking at the, at the song titles here. Um... You have Mississippi, which is a great song. Uh, High Water for Charlie Patton, a great song. Po' Boy, a very nice. This would become like, it set, it set the tone for what Dylan albums were going were going to be after this. Dylan didn't do a lot of hard rocking after this album. There's a lot of piano on it. A lot of uh, Sinatra sounds in the sense. Like, a lot of these were sounding like lounge songs, but still had that classic Dylan vibe. He's still writing great lyrics, and I love hearing his lyrical interpretations on this. But I need to give this album another listen. Five stars. Next, and then we have, uh, these are a little bit out of order because I'm putting these in chronological order of his releases. So I have some of the Bootleg series in here. Um, and the first one that I have is Bootleg Series Volume 6, Bob Dylan Live 1964. I don't have one through one through five, obviously. Four and five, I want to pick up. They're hard to find. And one, and one through three, which is one set, it's very hard to find. But this one, I, I came across it. I, I picked it up. It's live uh, Halloween 1964, concert at Philharmonic Hall with Joan Baez on a couple of songs. Uh, it's a two-CD set, and I, I love these bootleg series because you get these really thick booklets of just information. But this album was... Dylan had just put out Another Side of Bob Dylan, so he was writing more songs about himself, about love, not so much finger-pointing protest songs, though the audience that came to this concert really expected them. And Dylan brought a lot of songs out in this concert that he had never that had not been released yet. Mr. Tambourine Man, It's All Right, Mom, I'm Only Bleeding, Gates of Eden. It's like Dylan is still smiling because he knows the public love him, loves him, but he's doing his own, but he wants to do his own thing. And this concert is the first time he ever, he ever really uh, presented that. But I need to listen to it again. I just got this one, actually. I'm actually really proud. This is Modern Times. <coughs> Modern Times from 2006. This is the CD and bonus DVD. The bonus DVD's got like four videos on it, but it was on sale, so I picked it up. Um, this one was, uh, again, kind of... This was Love and Theft Plus, in the sense that you had some nice-sounding songs on here, like... Um, when, when the deal goes down, but you also had, and you also had some like rocking songs on here, Rolling and Tumbling, uh, Someday Baby, and this album was essentially proof that hey, it's 2006, Dylan's been around for 40 plus years, he's not going anywhere. And then he had this was a, this was actually a Starbucks only release, but I found this not at Starbucks. Picked it up. It's Bob Dylan live at the Gaslight, 1962. Gaslight was one of the clubs he played when he was in New York City um, before he got signed um, to to um, to record. 
but you have classic, what we come classic Dylan songs, A Hard Rain's Gonna Fall and Don't Think Twice It's Alright, and a lot of songs that he never got around to recording, Rocks and Gravel, The Cuckoo, Handsome Molly. If you've never, if you've never heard of those before, well, there's, there's a reason, because that those never appeared on, 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 on any album. But very, but uh, a very fine live album. It's just Dylan and his guitar. Sometimes it gets a bit boring, but looking back on it now, knowing where Dylan came from, it's a very interesting thing to listen to. And speaking of history lessons, you have, this one's a little damaged because I bought it used. This is uh, Bob Dylan, The Bootleg Series, Volume 7, No Direction Home, The Soundcheck. Martin Scorsese's No Direction Home, Bob Dylan documentary. Watch that. Even if you don't like Dylan that much, the documentary will at least, will hopefully give you at least an idea of where he came from. Um, because he, he, he's very humble in that documentary. Uh, and this is the soundtrack to that. It's two CDs of unreleased materials, except for, I think, two songs that had already been released. Um, and just an, ex just, just an excuse to release more Dylan uh, songs from the archives. Uh, you have live recordings, uh, alternate versions of songs, uh, some historical live things, like his performance of Maggie's Farm from the 1965 Newport, Newport Folk Festival. That's a mouthful. Where he went all electric, you hear some booing in that. And this is this is like the history of Dylan in two discs from 1959 to 1966, um, but done with alternate versions of songs. And then the final one I have in this pile, not the final Dylan album, is Together Through Life from 2009. Uh, this is the uh, special deluxe edition that comes with uh, two bonus discs, a, an episode of Bob Dylan's radio show, Theme Time Hour, this episode is Friends and Neighbors, and a bonus DVD of Roy Silver uh, interview. Roy Silver was Bob's man, er, manager very early on. Early on, I think this interview was supposed to be for No Direction Home, but didn't. But ended up getting cut. It's called The Lost Interview. Roy Silver, really, really, uh, quite a character. Um, I bought this in two thousand nine. I don't think I've played it since, because I remember at the time, it just wasn't that interesting. Like, at that time, 2009, I'm really getting into Bob Dylan. I love all the, the, the electric stuff. I get this. This sounds, like, the back cover perfectly illustrates it. It sounds like, like Americana 19, 1920s music, but recorded in 2009. I didn't love it. I need to go back. All right, end of pile. Water swig. See how I'm doing in recording. Oh, just give me one quick second. All right. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. All right, then you have uh, Dylan Tempest 2012. I bought this when I was going to college. Uh, Starbucks was selling it. The package is a little bit beat up. Uh, very basic package, just a little fold out in the CD. Never played this in its entirety. Played a couple of tracks from it when it came out. I was really excited. Never played the album when it came out, and I still haven't. Heard a couple of songs, but not the whole thing. Because I remember thinking, how do you pronounce that? Duquesne Whistle? That's how it's pronounced in the front thing. And then the final thing, I just bought this, and I have played this all a while. This is Bob Dylan's Shadows in the Night, 2015. Uh, all covers of, like, Sinatra-style songs. Um, but it has the cheapest packaging I've ever seen. The disc isn't in here. But if you look at the packaging, like, here's the, here, here's the front. It's just a, a piece of cardboard with the cover and the, and the credits. And then the, I don't know if you can see that, but the CD looks like something that like was just put together really slop, sloppily. But the packaging is important. The album is actually really, like really surprisingly good in the sense that you wouldn't expect Dylan's voice to match these songs. Um, and somehow, gosh darn it, somehow he's, uh, he's, he's pulling it off. Some of the songs work really well because some of these songs um, are sad songs and I guess as he gets older his voice kind of has that sad quality to it um and it really fits these songs the album the album's not that long it's only about 30 minutes long um but I really like it um if you're a Dylan fan you should pick this up because I think you'll be surprised as I was all right that's all my Dylan and then we're moving on to the E's we have the Eagles Hotel California classic album uh probably the Eagles best album in most people, in my opinion, just song after song is great. Hotel California, New Kid in Town, Life in the Fast Lane, Wasted Time, and only nine tracks. How, what else can I say about Hotel California? It's great. 
need to get the other Eagle, Eagle albums too, because I have Hell Freezes Over. Does anybody remember the record store Virgin Records? They were closing, and they had a big blowout sale because everything had to everything had to go. And I bought this because it was the only it was the only artist on the shelf that looked that looked uh, uh, familiar to me. I bought this. It's a live album with uh, four new songs, but never never played the four new songs. And I only played from the live album. I only played like Life in the Fast Lane in Hotel California. You need to go back and listen to that. Then you have uh, Earth, Blend, and Fire, super hits. These are uh, 10 songs uh, from Earth, Wind, and Fire. Uh, kind of what you would expect on Earth, Wind, and Fire compilation. you got Shining Star, uh, September, Boogie Wonderland, Got to Get You Into My Life. Um, it doesn't have That's the Way the World Is, and that's the song that I want. Uh, but, but very reasonably priced. Their cover of Got to Get You Into My Life is phenomenal. Uh, and just, yeah, what a funky, funky group. Uh, Roberta Flack, uh, Killing Me Softly. I bought this for one song, Killing Me Softly with this song. Never even bothered to hear the rest of the album. Uh, Lady Soul, Aretha Franklin. And you're probably thinking, dude, where's I Never Loved a Man the Way That I Love You? Well, I um, haven't found that one. But this is Lady Soul, her follow-up. And what some people would actually say, and from what I've heard of I Never Loved a Man the Way I Love You, this is actually a little bit better. Now, I never loved the man the way, how, the, the way that I love you. Blah, 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 blah. That has respect. This does not. But this shows that Aretha Franklin um, is doing more than just, you know, respect. Do right woman, do right man. Uh, I never loved the man. Like, love songs or, prote or uh, women protest songs. Like, these are, like... Time Magazine had a quote where they said, these songs didn't sound like they existed until she opened her mouth. And, so, and you know what? That's probably a good description of these. Plus, you got Eric Clapton on a song, Since You've Been Gone. No, sorry, Eric Clapton's on uh, Good to Me as I Am to You. Um, you know, Aretha Franklin, great voice. This was reasonably priced, and I really liked it. And then we get to, uh, I was just listening to this guy earlier. You got Peter Gabriel, uh, one of my favorite singer-songwriters, uh, formerly of Genesis, and actually I have Genesis after him. Um, a lot of albums from him. I right off the bat, I don't have so because that I want to get the super deluxe edition of that. And so I only have these. I'll show them off. I got two albums and one compilation. Starting with Peter Gabriel three. Um, this is known as the Melt album because his face is melting. His first first three albums all had the same name, Peter Gabriel. So we call them. We as fans call them one, two, and three, and what uh, what what the cover looks like. But yeah, Peter Gabriel three showing that. This was the, obviously his third album after he left Genesis, showing that Peter Gabriel can write successful and artistically great uh, songs without Genesis, uh, without a band. Um, this was also his big breakthrough in the UK with songs like Biko and Games Without Frontiers. But I really like a lot of, a lot of the tracks on the album. Um, off the top of my head, I, I, I can't think of one that I actually dislike. Uh, but it, it just shows... That the, the first two albums, a lot of people say, were kind of like, you know, stepping stones because they, you know, was, he was trying. And then this album, he really just, you know, third time's a charm. And that's what, that's what happened with this album. Uh, the compilation that I have is Shaking the Tree, 16 Golden Greats. Now, this is the album that you need to start if you want to get into Peter Gabriel as a solo artist. It's got 16 tracks. Um, it's got two new tracks, Shaking the Tree, and a re-recorded version of Here Comes the Flood. Um, but it's got all the hits you'd want. Salisbury Hill, Sledgehammer, uh, Don't Give Up, uh, Shock the Monkey. The only thing I would personally do is I would take Czar out, which is a really nice you know piece of music. But Czar is uh, instrumental, doesn't really fit here. And I would replace that with In Your Eyes from So, the song from Say Anything. Because I think that needs to be known before you hear Czar. So, but but get this one, get this one first, listen to it. Um, if you want to be a Peter Gabriel fan, there's also a two CD set called Hit, um, and and that one's uh, pretty good too. I haven't heard all the tracks on that one yet, but this one is the one that you wanna that you wanna start with. Uh, and then in 2010, this is the two CD version called Scratch My Back. Um, in fact, a few years a few years ago in 2013, there was a companion album called I'll Scratch Yours. The idea being that Peter Gabriel recorded a bunch of covers um, that he liked by artists who would then return the favor and record one of his uh, songs on the album I'll Scratch Yours, but those albums were three years apart, because as you can imagine, it took some time. Um, yeah. I, I started listening to this album when I got it, and I, I just I just haven't made it all the way through, because Gabriel completely 
he, this is good and bad. He takes the songs and completely like reimagines them. Like he covers, for example, David Bowie's Heroes on here. He 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 takes away the the David Bowie production of it and completely strips it down to just a few instruments and his old and his old weary voice, which fits these songs well, kind of like with Bob Dylan. But man, th this whole album is just one one flavor. It's just the same thing, track after track. You can take a track and isolate it, and you and you'd like it. But for me, it's just there were some times when it would get to the other track, and I didn't even know it. I didn't even know it. Didn't even spot the difference. Plus, I'm not familiar with a lot of these covers anyway. But I'm not. I'm not familiar with uh, Bonnie Vare and uh, Regina Spector personally. Maybe this album will, if, once I listen to this album, maybe it'll help me gain appreciation for them. Okay, now we move on to Peter Gabriel's former band, Genesis. Now, again, I need to stress, I only have two things in my collection from Genesis, and they're not exactly the greatest things that you'd have in the world. Because Genesis, they had three box sets of their studio albums, and I want to get those, but they're super expensive, and they're really hard to find. Um, but I picked up these because they were on sale when I picked them up. You have Invisible Touch... I know some people are laughing at me like, dude, out of all the albums, you have Invisible Touch? Def Genesis is his most poppy album, 80s, gave him a number one hit with Invisible Touch, um, but I like it. I like pop songs. What's wrong with liking pop songs? So this album, you know, you know, gave me those. Phil Collins sounds really good singing on them. I, I don't like In Too Deep, though. That's a track that I, I could pretty much live my life with that. Is it harmful? No. But I don't want to hear it again, if that makes any sense. Plus, it's got a, a, a bonus DVD, all music videos, behind the scenes, uh, tour documentary. Haven't watched all of that. But I picked it up because it was on sale. Uh, and then, <laughs> out of the all of the Genesis albums I have, this is the only one I have. The Way We Walk, Volume 1, The Shorts. Volume 2 are uh, the, the longs, like the tracks that are really long. These are all, these are the, the, the general hits. Land of Confusion, No Son of Mine, Jesus He Knows Me, Throwing It All Away, I Can't Dance, so on and so forth. Never really play this all the way through because to me, I didn't spot that much of a difference between these and the albums. And the album version. Now the longs, on the other hand, are are really cool to listen to because they take the song and just you know go from there. But these, but, th but this one is just one that I just was never that interested in, and I haven't really heard all of it. All right, that's another pile. Are you keeping a tally? I hope you are. All right, moving on with the G's. You got the Goo Goo Dolls. Dizzy up the girl. Bought this for one song. Iris, my favorite song of theirs, out of five that I've heard. What what else, what else is on this album? Broadway, Slide, Black Balloon. Never really heard those, and never heard the rest of the album. I only bought this because, hey, it's two bucks. Iris costs one twenty nine on iTunes, and hey, I can get the rest of the album with it. I never played it. All right, moving on to Green Day. Now this is gonna take a while because Green Day I have almost everything of theirs. So I'll, I'll, maybe I'll go through them really quickly, because a lot of it I haven't heard. You got Green Day, 1,039 1, Smoothed Out Slappy Hours, a compilation of their three EPs, uh, 39 Smooth, Slappy, and 1,000 Hours. See how they put, all the, put it all together in the, in the title. Um, never heard this, but it, as I would imagine, it'd be, it'd be interesting to listen, to listen and see... Um, where they came from, but never heard this. Follow up, Kerplunk, an actual album of theirs, uh, features My Generation, a cover by The Who, and it also features uh, Welcome to Paradise, which they, which they would re record for the next album, Dookie. Um, other than those two, never heard this album. I know it's got classic early Green Day songs, 2000 Light Years Away, and Who Wrote Holding Caulfield. Never heard it. Bought it on sale. Now, a lot of these were actually on sale. Dookie. Their classic pop album, uh, so many videos on MTV uh, when this came out. When did this come out? The 90s. I can't really read it in here. Uh, but you have Welcome to Paradise, Longview, She, When I Come Around, Basket Case, and, and, and you get classic Green Day album cuts also. Um, just a phenomenal uh, pop punk album. 
very, very good. Which you would kind of get a little bit more and a little bit, a little bit more of that and a little bit more than that on this album, Insomniac. Uh, features uh, the tracks Geek Stink Breath, uh, Brain Stew, and Jaded, Walking Contradiction. Have never played any more than any more uh, than those, um, because these, this has a similar feel to Dookie, but the songs are a little bit harder edged on this album, especially Jaded. Jaded's a wild piece of music, but I need to give this album a listen. Plus the the, the CD that I bought it, like it's almost sliding out of the case. Bought it on sale. It's super scratched up. I should probably replace that. All right, then you got Nimrod, the longest, probably the, one of the longest albums Green Day ever did. It's 18 tracks. Um, I've only, I only bought it for the highlights. Nice Guys Finished Last, Hitching a Ride, um, Reject, King for a Day, uh, and Good Riddance Time of Your Life. Those are classic songs. Never heard the rest of the album, from four, and it's really long. If you look at the back, there's 18 tracks, and... I love Green Day, but I don't know how much of, the, of them I can take on one album. If an album is 44 minutes long, it's a good pace for me. Then you got Green Day, Warning, their folky album, and the first one of the new millennium in 2000. Um, I really like this album. This was the, Why have I heard this one in its entirety and not Nimrod? This one I've heard its entirety. It's very good. Um, I think the front cover kind of illustrates it like... They're, they're they're trying to progress, but they're still but they're still in that pop in that pop punk sense. A lot of people hated this album. Uh, commercially, it didn't do very well. But I, I love the song "Warning." I don't care what anybody thinks. Um, "Waiting" and "Minority," and especially Macy's Day Parade, are three extraordinary songs. Um, and they 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 get a sense of maturity, and also that they get a sense of Dylan esque in this album. Like there's a lot more acoustic guitars. There's some harmonica on it. Um, and I think this album was uh, was their attempt to try to break the Green Day uh, formula. And it worked for some people like me, and it didn't work for some people. Uh, in the midst of it, uh, before their next album, which will be five years later, they released a compilation album called Sh uh, Shenanigans. Um, not so much a compilation, it was just like songs that were from like CD singles or, or that hadn't an all-on-one uh, compilation. Never played this though. Then, oh, Green Day, American Idiot. Absolutely my favorite Green Day album. This, this was the first album I ever had from there, so not only is it nostalgic, but I listened to it, and I listened to it, and I listened to it, and I listened to it. Um, this was just complete... Com I don't want to say complete reinvention, but it's pop punk, but it told a story. Like, what? A punk rock opera? Like... Uh, that's, that's an idea on paper that shouldn't work, but Green Day, gosh darn it, they pull it off. I love the story in this. Some people didn't even know there was a story behind it. Two tracks in this album are over nine minutes long. I don't care. They just really... Uh, I could talk more and more about this album, but it kind of repeats on the next album, their live album, Bull in a Bible. The majority of the American Idiot Live, plus a couple of other stuff on here. Why was the audio CD cut down? The audio CD only runs an hour long, some dialogue was taken out, which would have been really cool to listen to. It comes with a bonus DVD, which I haven't watched, but the DVD, from what I know, features a lot of the unedited, um, you know, dialogue on it. So what, what, what the heck? You know, let's get the full, you know, dialogue. It's I don't, I, I don't really want to talk about it anymore. All right, then we have Twenty First Century Breakdown from two thousand and nine. This was essentially. American Idiot was 45 minutes punk rock opera. This is like an hour and, thir and 30 minutes punk op or punk rock opera. Because you get three three acts. I don't understand the story of this one uh, better than American Idiot. Um, but I still love the album. Uh, it's a little bit too... It's, it's more cutting edge than American Idiot. It's got more songs. But I, I don't play this one as much as American Idiot. Uh, I bought this; it was used, and plus it came with a, a, a bonus disc, uh, live in Japan. Um, so I was like, "Hey, you know, what the heck?" But still, a very, very, very good album if you love Green Day's ability to tell stories. Uh, and then 2009, after that, you had a number of years until 2012 when they released three albums back to back to back: uh, Uno, Dos, Tre. If you don't get the joke, Trey is their drummer, and that's who's pictured on, on the cover here. 
Um, I've lost the disc. I've lost the disc to, to Uno. Like I want it back, or I want to get a really. I want a free copy or something. So, you know, if Green is watching, send me a free copy. I, I lost it. I seriously did. Uh, Uno, I got it when I was in college. I played it like crap, and I've heard it so many times that I kind of can't listen to it anymore because it just kind of doesn't do anything for me anymore. A lot of really, a lot of great songs on here. Some not so great. I'm not a, I'm not a particular big fan of Oh Love. I think it's kind of a weak track. Um, but I can't listen, to, I can't really listen to this album anymore because it's just, I heard these songs a little too many times. Dose, on the other hand, I, I can't listen to it either because Dose is, this is all party, party, party. Uno is like going to the party. Dose is, you're at the party, someone gave you some, something to snort, something to drink, and it's just party, 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 party. And I can't really listen to it either because it's just, yeah, you want to, you want to just leave. You want to get some fresh air. Luckily, this is the shortest of the albums. It's only, what, 30 minutes long? Um, and the track Amy that ends the album was a tribute to Amy Winehouse. That is a breath of, that's a breath of fresh air because that, that's a slow track. It's like someone died at the party and now, you, and now you're, you're, you're remembering. But man, just, it's only 30 minutes long, but it's just, it's all a, a big adrenaline thrill ride. If you're on coffee, this album would probably work great for you. But I don't drink coffee. And then Trey, my personal favorite of, of the three. Trey is the most diverse of these because you have you some track because th this is the more mature. It's like you got ready, for, you got ready for the party. You're at the party. This is the next day. You're a bit hungover and you realize what you want to do going forward. Because there's a lot of mature songs on here. Um, there's still some still some party songs on here. Uh, and it ends with a with the forgotten, a really great song that can really only exist uh, as uh, as the closer on this album. My my personal favorite. Um, again, I've heard this one a little too many times, but because this one has a little bit more uh, diversity than Uno, I'll pl I will play this one, but I won't play it a lot. All right, so that's my Green Day. I don't have their 2014 release, the Demolicious, which are the demos for those songs. And frankly, I have to be honest, the songs on all of these, if you line them all, let's see, there's 12, 24, so there's, there's 37 songs. These aren't the best songs that Green Day wrote. There are gems, but they're not the best ones that they wrote. I don't know. Then you have Guns N' Roses, Appetite for Destruction, the only album from Guns N' Roses that I have. Um, I bought this, played this for the big hits, Welcome to the Jungle, uh, Paradise City, Sweet Child of Mine. But I haven't heard it, I haven't heard it in, uh, any other thing from it. I know some people are, are very disappointed in me. And I am a little bit too, actually. So I'll put that down. Alright, what do we got? Ah, yes, George Harrison. Now, again, I need to preface by saying there are two boxes of George Harrison's, the Dark Horse years and the Apple years. I want to get those. I don't have those. But I have two albums from the Apple years, uh, Dark Horse and Extra Texture, easily two of George's, George's least liked albums. The Apple years features remastered versions, which I can't wait to hear. But these were the original CD versions. I bought these because, you know, these albums aren't on iTunes. The only way to get them were from CD. Let's start with Dark Horse. Dark Horse should be, people say it's be called Dark Horse, H-O-A-R-S-T. George's voice is shot. Some of the songs on here would sound really nice with a nice voice. George doesn't have it on here, and it kind of ruins the experience. Some nice tracks. Harry's on Tour Express is a really great opener. Bye Bye Love, the rework of the Everly Brothers, is kind of all over the place. Uh, Ding Dong Ding Dong, a nice holiday track. Dark Horse, an actually good song. Not the Katy Perry song, much better than that one. But George's vocals just, you wish, they don't repel you, but you wish that he had just waited. Whereas Extra Texture, most fans like this album less than Dark Horse. I, I'm a complete minority. I like this album probably a little bit better because George's vocals in better condition, and that to me completely sells me over Dark Horse. Um, I know that this album is a bit tiring. It's a bit long. Let's see. The shortest song in this album is 45 seconds, but the next, but the, the shortest song after that is three minutes and forty and three minutes forty one. So there's a lot of uh, slow paced long tracks on this album. But I like this album better than Dark Horse because his vocals is much better, and that just is what just does it for me. 
And I love this guitar, Can't Keep From Crying. I know it's a ripoff of One My Guitar Gently Weeps, but man, it's a great track. And then I have the best of Dark Horse, 1976 to 1989. Um, because I because I don't have the Dark Horse Years box set, this is all of those albums in one disc. Plus you have three new tracks, Poor Little Girl, uh, Cockamamie Business, and Cheer Down. Plus all the great songs on here. I mean, what can I say? George is, George is, my, George is my second favorite solo Beatle behind Paul, because Paul's, Paul's Paul, and George is George. They're all, they're all their... Um, their own sound. But George, I just, I, I, I love that photo of him just kind of smirking at you because, you know, George doesn't demand to be heard, but when you, but when you hear his music, you're like, wow. And then the last thing I have from George is called Early Takes Volume 1. This is the companion uh, album to the documentary Living, Living in the Material World. Uh, this is 10 tracks, um, all on release, some demos and early takes, even some songs he, he never recorded, like uh, Let It Be Me, the Everly Brothers song, Mama, You've Been On My Mind, a Dylan song. This album is very, very short. It's 30 minutes. Where is volume two? It's only been three years. This came out in 2012. It's been three years. Where is volume two? I want it, and I want it now. I want more George in, in my collection. Uh, but this will, if, if, if this is all that comes out, you know what, I'm still happy because it's still great. And I, and, and I do play this one a lot because I love hearing the intimacy because George doesn't put out a lot of unreleased tracks. And this is, this is the best that we're going to get right now. All right. Almost, uh, finished with the H's here. You got Ted Hawkins. Ted Hawkins is a blues singer. This is the next hundred years. I bought this because it was recommended to me. Um, he's got a cover of uh, Creedence Clearwater Revival, as long as I see the light on here. Haven't played that, haven't played the album. By the way, don't have any Creedence Clearwater Revival in my collection either. Should I change that? Probably should. And the next I got Hendrix. Um, <laughs> again, only Hendrix I have in my collection uh, is this one. Uh, this is a, what was it, South, Sat South Saturn Delta, which is sort of like a compilation of tracks that hadn't come out and like alternate versions of tracks that had already come out. Uh, the reason why I don't have any actual Hendrix albums is because I want to get the CD DVD collections that have come out, but those are hard to find. But this will do. I bought it on sale. It's Hendrix. You gotta love them. Alternate versions of um, All on the Watchtower and uh, uh, there's a track Bleeding Heart, Little Wing, Angel. I need to listen to this. I, I, I don't listen to much Hendrix. I have to admit that. I, I really don't. I guess because I, you know, psychedelic rock is something that I have to be in the mood for, and for, for that to be all Hendrix all the time, I need to be in the mood for it. So I'll, I'll add that to my list of CDs to listen to when I am um, when I'm done with this video. All right, next we have Don Henley, Building the Perfect Beast. Don Henley, the vocalist and drummer for the Eagles, uh, bought this for the Boys of Summer. I love that track. Um, Sunset Grill is another another good one. But I've only heard those two. Bought this on sale, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's not in here. When I bought this, someone had it was used, and someone stuck a Don Henley concert ticket inside. So that's kind of cool. Oh, uh, Michael Jackson. Gotta love Michael Jackson. Uh, don't have Off the Wall. I want to get the special edition of that. Well, this is Thriller. Y you gotta own Thriller. Any copy, or every copy. Every CD, vinyl, cassette, you, you gotta own it. Thriller is one of those classic albums where nine tracks, every song is amazing. When the album's over, you go, wow, that was amazing. Uh, you got some bonus material on here, and just phenomenal record. I, I can't add anything else that hasn't been said about this album. Michael Jackson, Thriller. Oh, yeah. Uh, bad, special edition. The, the follow-up to Thriller. Uh, not as good as Thriller, but very, very good also. If Thriller was like a 10 out of 10, Bad has to at least be an 8 out of 10. Um, plus Bad has five songs that went to number one. Amazing. Bad, The Way It Made Me Feel, Man in the Mirror, I Just Can't Stop Loving You, and Dirty Diana. I mean, and those are just the hits. I mean, you can't forget Smooth Criminal, Leave Me Alone, Speed Demon, Another Part of Me. Just an, another, you know, great album. But kind of just falls flat because it, it, it was the follow-up to the best thing he ever did. But I, I, I still love it. And then, uh, this was actually the first Michael Jackson I ever owned, because he had just passed away, 
2009, he just passed away, and I was going to turn 16. Yeah, I was turning 16 at the time, and I asked my friend to, to get me this, because when he died, I was like, man, you know, I should listen to why he was so popular. And then I just completely got hooked in. I asked my friend to get me this, get me this for his, my birthday. He did. It's a two CD, the, the Essential Michael Jackson, and the title says it all. Every song that you'd ever want from Michael Jackson while he was alive is on here. Uh, the only thing I can think of off the head is not off the top of my head, it's not on here, is I'll Be There, the Jackson 5 song. But everything is in here. It's jam-packed, two CDs, um, just 38 tracks. It's just it's just phenomenal. We played this all... Well, I was doing a production at my high school, Beauty and the Beast. We played this all the time in the boys' room. Great memories, great music, great times. Rest in peace, Michael Jackson. We love you. All right. We're almost at the halfway point here. It's amazing, huh? finish off on Michael Jackson. This is a CD, a CD single that came out uh, from Walmart. This is uh, I Just Can't Stop Loving You, and then there's a second track on here called Don't Be Messing Around. Uh, both of these are from the bad album sessions. Um, I Just Can't Stop Loving You on this is the actual version that was released as a single with a, with, with, with a spoken word intro. And then Don't, Don't Be Messing Around was a demo he made, but a very, very funky, very cool demo. Uh, this, was, this was a teaser uh, because um, for Bad 25, the 25th anniversary of the album Bad, this was a teaser before that, that came out, uh, which I, I, I haven't gotten that. But these two tracks are really worth it. And it was very, very cheap. I picked it up. I love Michael Jackson. You know what? Any any addition to Michael Jackson, my collection I have is, is is welcome. So, I love it. And speaking of new additions, uh, two thousand this recent year, two thousand fourteen, to mark four, uh, five years since his passing, we have Escape. This is the deluxe edition with uh, the extended CD and the DVD. Now, what do I, what do I want to say about Escape? If you love Michael Jackson, you need to at least listen to this because. This shows, these are made up of eight songs that Michael Jackson never released during his lifetime. They're on here twice. If you, if you buy the deluxe edition, it's on there twice because you get the original version recorded in whatever year he made it. And then you get a remixed version to make it sound like had he updated these songs in 2014. And they're just extraordinary to listen to, showing that Michael could write and his opinion was not a good song, or he would save it for a song that would go on the album. And you listen to this and you go, that was amazing. You know, like, how come this is on the album? How come this isn't on, you know, Bad, instead of, I don't know, something else? It, it's just, you know, Michael Jackson, even five years after he's he's passed away, proving that Michael Jackson can still write good songs that we haven't heard yet. Even though there's only eight on here, it's it's phenomenal. Love Never Felt So Good. The, the original version of that is just him on piano. The remix sounds like a Michael Jackson dance tune. It's amazing. Sorry, I need to calm down. Um, and also that song's turned into a duet with Justin Timberlake. Uh, there's, there's a track on here called a Place, a Place With No Name, which is a reworking of America as a Horse With No Name, one of my favorite songs ever. And the DVD is worth a watch, too. All right. Uh, in Excess, Kick. Bought this for their song, uh, Need You Tonight. It's also got Never Tear Us Apart and New Sensation. Never played it. Never played it. Uh, Billy Joe Armstrong and uh, Nora Jones. Billy Joe, the lead singer of Green Day, and Nora Jones, who we all know and love. Don't have her in my collection. That's for my mom. This was uh, this is called For Everly. This was a tribute to the Everly Brothers. Uh, they redid um, the album Songs Our Daddy Taught Us, the Everly Brothers album, and they completely... Uh, they recorded all those tracks. Nora Jones and Billy Joe really harmonized with themselves very, very nice. But this album was, was kind of like Peter Gabriel's Scratch My Back. It's kind of all one flavor. There's not a whole lot to it. There's only, let's see, it's them two and one, two, three, four other musicians. And you know what? I can respect them uh, for doing this album, but I just, I just, I, I tried getting through it once and, and and I, I, I just couldn't. I've heard the first, what was it, six songs, and then I kind of just put it away. I, I need to give this one another listen. All right, so I'm making a big mess. 
Next we got uh, Billy, jo Th this freaks me out. This is a Billy Joel Piano Man, uh, two CD deluxe edition. Look at that, is that, the, is that the kind of face you want on an album cover? It just, I don't understand, I don't understand it. But it's Billy Joel, Piano Man, the song Piano Man, also great on here is You're My Home, The Ballad of Billy the Kid, Captain Jack. I love those songs, but I never gave the album, the whole album a listen. I really should. And the second disc on here is uh, live at Sigma Sound Studios, April 15th, 1972, um, featuring a lot of songs on here. I haven't played that either. Actually, no, I started it, but didn't finish it. But I bought the deluxe edition because from what I've heard of Billy Joel, I got it. I got to own it. Uh, and then we're skipping a number of years because it's I I want to find the remastered versions of his albums in '98, and a few of these I have, and a few of these I don't. So if it's not my don't have, I want to get that one. So this is 52nd Street. The price tag is a little ripped on here. Uh, 52nd Street. This was the follow up to the Stranger. I have the Stranger in a box set, which I'll show later. Uh, this is 52nd Street. Uh, features Big Shot, uh, Honesty. One of my least favorite Billy Joel songs. To be honest, uh, no pun intended. My life, and I haven't heard the rest of the album. Only get, only give those three listen. To. I bought this. I guess it was on sale. And I like those songs, thinking I was gonna like the album, but I haven't played it. And then you got Billy Joel Glass Houses, kind of a departure from the other albums because this one is a lot more features a lot more electric guitar, a lot more rock and B Billy Joel than just you know Piano Man, nice and pretty. You got You May Be Right, Sometimes a Fantasy, Don't Ask Me Why, It's Still Rock and Roll to Me, and those are only the first four songs. Uh, and all for, and, and all for Lanya is really good too. Just a, a really nice departure, and I, I, I love that album cover of him about to throw you know a rock into a glass house, and that's actually the first sound you hear on this album. You hear a glass shattering, and it's kind of like Billy Joel, you know, breaking down his own walls. You know, instead of just doing the same thing over and over again, he he goes full out electric. And then we have. Uh, live album, Songs in the Key of Life from 1981. This had the hit She's Got Away, which was actually on his first album, but the live version became the hit. And I never played this either. There's a pattern going on here. Now, these Billy Joel albums I want to update because these are like the original... Here, here, let me show you this. See on the disc for Songs in the Attic, like the, art, the artwork on the CD is actually like nice because that's the remastered version. But if you bought the original CD versions like I have with this album, it's just flat, plain, and boring. The CD sounds nice, but I've, I've, the remaster would sound, you know, heavenly. But this is the Nylon Curtain. Uh, Billy Joel himself cites this as, as probably the best thing he ever did uh, because he said this was sort of like his Sgt. Pepper in a way, that he was experimenting with new sounds. Uh, Allentown on here has, has a lot of it uses a lot of like industrial sounds as the percussion on here. Uh, Good Night Saigon's an incredible tune. Where's the Orchestra? An, an, an underrated song. Um, and just another, another great Billy Joel album. Uh, this one uh, I can't pronounce it, but it's Billy Joel's Russian live album. Uh, K O H U E P D T. Uh, this came out in the extended version last year called. Uh, the bridge, bridge to Russia, or something like that. But I want to get that because that comes with the extended concert and DVD. This is just like the highlights on one uh, one disc. But you got two uh, sort of exclusive tracks. You got "Back in the USSR," a Beatle cover, and "The Times They Are Changing," the Bob Dylan cover with Billy Joel on guitar. Never thought you'd see that, but I still haven't heard uh, a lot of this album. Uh, Billy Joel, The Bridge, which um, was 1986. Uh, it gave birth to some well-known songs. This is the time, A Matter of Trust, Modern Woman, Baby Grand. Never played this. It was on sale. Billy Joel albums don't don't go for a lot of money, so I picked them up. And then Billy Joel, Stormfront. This album has a, has a lot more. What was this? 1989. Big 80s sounds on this album. Listen to the to the, the to the, the the Down Easter Alexa. That is a full blown production. That sound that doesn't sound like anything on Piano Man. Um, you also got We Start the Fire, 
which we've all heard that song. I go to extremes. Shameless, his original version with Garth with that Garth Brooks covered. Um, and so it goes. One of my favorites. Uh, just just one of my one of my favorites. And then his last album, Boo, 1993. It's only been 21 years, Billy Joel. Uh, River of Dreams. A lot of people were disappointed with this album. I like this album because I like last albums, um, especially when they're done right. But this one is the last offering he gave me. Uh, you know, I, I love Billy Joel, so I, I, it's like I can't stay mad at him. Um, plus, I heard, this, I heard this when I was in high school, so it kind of has that nostalgia factor. And plus, it was toward the end of my high school my high school uh, studies that I heard this, so it was, it's kind of appropriate. Uh, you got... Uh, Good Night, My Angel, The River of Dreams, and even the, the last two tracks, 2,000 Years, because this came out in 1993, and Famous Last Words. They're not that bad. Not that bad. A lot of people hate this album, and you know what? Maybe There are bits that I'll admit it, it's kind of boring, but I still, I, I, I still like it. All right, uh, that was it for that pile, so I, I need another drink. All right, uh, let's keep going. All right, let's do this. Uh, Billy Joel, 2,000 Years, the Millennium Concert. Took place New Year's Eve, 1999. Um, I was on a cruise ship at the time. And Billy Joel brings out a lot of things for this, for this incredibly you know, long concert. Uh, everything from Big Shot, uh, Moving Out, Anthony Song, Ballad of Billy the Kid, to cool covers like Honky, The Rolling Stones' Honky Tonk Women, Sly and Family Stone, Dance to the Music. And... The whole thing on here is just party, party, party. And, you know, y you want that, especially if it's a New Year's live album. You want that. All right, moving on. You have to the other famous piano player, uh, Elton John. Now, I don't have Elton John's first album. Um, I used to have Empty Sky, but I sent it off because it was a bad copy, and I don't have Tumbleweed Connection. I want to get those two, especially those that have deluxe editions, but this is what I do have. Madman Across the Water, uh, which I've only heard Tiny Dancer, Levon, Madman Across the Water, and that's it. This came out, this was Elton John's remastered series. This one didn't have any bonus tracks. I would have maybe like some bonus tracks. Uh, Elton John, Honky Chateau, uh, recorded in France, um, features Honky Cat, Rocket Man, uh, and one of my favorites, uh, Mona Lisa's and Mad Hatter's. Um, this album is a, a little bit different because it's Elton John hadn't exploded; he had hits, but this album, a lot of people look at look at this as being like one like. If Goodbye Yellow Brick Road is Elton John's best album, a lot of people put this as put this as the second or third best. Since I haven't heard all of his albums, I can't really compare it. But it's a very it's it, it's a it's a very good album, very good. And then you have Elton John, "Don't Shoot Me, I'm Only the Piano Player." I love that title, featuring Daniel and Crocodile Rock. This one's a little bit more poppy because you also got uh, "I Want to Be a Teenage Idol," um, "High Flying Bird," and "Elderberry Wine." Um, and a bonus track of Skyline Pigeon. Uh, this is more uh, pop Elton John. In fact, Crocodile Rock was his first number one hit. Um, and you can take, you know, sophisticated Elton John and pop Elton John, and you still got... You still got to love them both. That was rude. I just burped. Probably got to stop drinking so much water. Then you got Elton John, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. I just... Desperately want to get the deluxe edition that came out last year with the CD, the live show, and the bonus DVD. This is all on one CD. What can you say about Goodbye Yellow Brick Road? It's a double album. It's long. Some songs are, you, some songs you could have taken out and it wouldn't have made a difference as long as you put them on another album. But this is just, you know, song after song is Funeral for a Friend, Candle in the Wind, Banging the Jets, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. And then you've got All the Girls Love Alice, Saturday Night's Alright for Fighting, Roy Rogers and Harmony. Just just when Elton John couldn't get bigger, he does this. Um, just amazing. I'm, I'm almost lost for words here. Uh, then you got Elton John, Caribou, uh, his follow-up to Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, featuring uh, The Bitch Is Back and uh, Don't Let The Sun Go Down On Me. I've seen the, And I've seen The Sausage, another good song. Comes with, comes with some bonus tracks, including his rock and cover of the Who's Pinball Wizard. 
but haven't played this one either. Actually, I, 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 th I did start playing this, but to me, it, it kind of came off as boring because it was the follow-up to, to, to this. And this is just, I don't want to say this was a, de a, a decline, but it was just kind of like, it just, it just can't compare, you know? And then you have a double album. This is the deluxe edition. Uh, Captain, uh, Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy. So if I can open up right there. It used to come with a poster. I lent, I lent this to a friend, and I didn't get the poster back. I want the poster back. But yes, um, haven't heard this one also, but it's a concept album, evidently. Features the hit song, uh, Someone Saved My Life Tonight. And the bonus disc is a live show where he does the entire album live. And he even says... We're going to do the entire album live. I'm sorry if you want to hear something else, but, you know, it's, you know, we're going to do it. And I, and you know what? I respect that. Um, and so I'm really, so now I'm curious to hear the whole album, especially the, the, the concept behind it. Uh, oh, live album, uh, double live album, uh, called Here and There. Uh, doesn't have the title in the front though. Um, here, the, here and there, uh, here live in London, and there disc two is live in New York in Madison Square Garden. Um, I've heard, I haven't heard the live in London disc, and I've only heard the live in New York disc because for three songs on here he brings out John Lennon. Like how cool is that? Whatever gets you through the night, loose in the sky with diamonds, and I saw her standing there, which became John Lennon's last public performance uh, before a, 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 a live audience. Um, and it's, it's all captured here, um, but I only played it for the John, for, I only played it for, for the John Lennon tracks. Where's my love for, El, for Elton, man? Alright, and then finishing up Elton John, we have, uh, this is, this is a CD single, Elton John, Something About the Way You Look Tonight, and Candle in the Wind, 1997, the best-selling single of all time. I see this all the time in record stores because it, it's just sold millions and millions of copies. Uh, I bought this because Candle in the Wind 1997 is not on iTunes, so I gotta have it. The price wasn't asking for much. And, uh, yeah, I mean, what, what can you say? It's Candle in the Wind. It's just, it's beautiful. Uh, and finishing off Elton John is uh, Live at the Ritz. Uh, if you don't know what this is, this was released only through Target. It's a six disc. Um, Live uh, set. Daniel, don't let the sun go down on me. Sorry seems to, ha seems to be the hardest word. Something about the way you look, look tonight. Take me to the pilot and the last song. This was 1999. We see Target only. I, I found this used. I had no idea what it was. I thought this was fake. Looked it up and I was like, wow, sold through Target? I gotta have this. Even though, you know, this is 998 and Target definitely won't sell this anymore. But I'm, I'm, I'm glad I have it. It's one, it's one of the rarities that I have in my collection. I'm proud to say that I have it. Uh, and then the final two out items I have from Elton John is 2001 Songs from the West Coast. Haven't heard this album either. I've only heard uh, the, the, the the two hits. What were they? I Want Love and This Train Don't Stop There Anymore. But This Train Don't Stop There Anymore, as a piece of music, is just, my goodness. It's just Elton just basically saying, yeah, I used to be uh, I used to be the uh, the Elton John piano player that wrote all these hits. I'm not like that anymore. I want to write songs for myself. I don't want to write for the charts. And and I'm sure this album features a lot more songs like that. But this train don't stop anymore. Phenomenal track. And Justin Timberlake is in the video for that. And then the last album that I have from Elton John is, uh, what was it, 2006, The Captain and Me. I don't have his album, The Diving Board. I want to, I want to get that in the deluxe editions, uh, wherever I can find those. But I haven't heard this one either. This was the this album, the last one before The Diving Board, which came out in 2013. Um, Elton John seems to not like this album himself. I guess he thought because uh, it didn't sell well. Um, and I bought it, it was on sale, and I haven't heard it myself either. But uh, The Captain and the Kid uh, has, I've heard that, and that has musical similarities to uh, Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy. So I'm curious to hear this. All right, uh, we seem to be at the halfway point, so everybody, uh, just, just take a moment and stretch. Pop in a mint for myself. All right, if you guys want to go to the bathroom, now might be a good chance. I need to do some stretching for a minute here. I keep banging up against my dresser here in the background. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have so much fun putting all my uh, all my stuff back. 
Oh. All right, let's do this. Let's get hold on. I'm gonna try and do this with the mint in my mouth and not make a not make not make a mess. All right, Jack Johnson, Brushfire Fairy Tales. Um, I like Jack Johnson from what I've heard. From this album, I've heard Bubble Toes and Flake. F Flake, I could go the rest of my life without hearing again. I just I heard it way too many times. I only I, I bought this because I know those two songs, but I but I've I've never played it. So we're kind of getting off on a we're kind of going fast here. Jack Johnson on and on, which I think was his follow up to. Uh, Brush Fire Fairy Tales. Never played this one either. Just bought it because I like Jack Johnson for what I heard. Journey, Greatest Hits. Bought this in Puerto Rico of all places. I love the fact how it just slides out and there's the disc. Bought this in Puerto Rico. It's Journey. You hear them all the time on the radio. Uh, might Maybe a bit overplayed, but you can still listen to Don't Stop Believing and you still want to sing along. Wheel in the Sky, Faithfully, Any Way You Want It, Separate Ways, Love and Touch and Squeeze and Open Arms. Just classic, classic radio hits. It's all in here. I don't think I'd ever own a Journey album. So I think, so I guess this will do. B.B. Uh, King, Live at the Regal. Now, one of those classic blues albums that a lot of people love, and so that's why I bought it. But I don't have much memory of listening to this album. I have to even wonder if I ever really did listen to this album. But it's, it's on those list of best albums to, to, to have, to listen to. So I'm glad I have it. BB King, still alive today. At like, what, 80-something? My goodness. All right, now we get to Led Zeppelin. And I've only got two uh, albums of theirs, and I'll explain why. I've got Led Zeppelin 1 and Led Zeppelin 2. These are the remastered version that came out in 2014. And that's why I don't have any Zeppelin, because I kind of I kind of waited, because I knew that Zeppelin were going to have these reissues, and I thought, you know what, this is the perfect time to get them in my collection. Remastered albums. These are the the two disc uh, uh, versions with companion audio. This one's got a live show. And this one's got like rough rough mixes of, of songs. So I start with these two, and then I'm going to buy them in in, in order. Let's up in three, four, Houses of the Holies, and so on and so forth. But yeah, what do, but what do I want to say? What do, what do I want to say about Led Zeppelin? If you have not heard Led Zeppelin's debut album. You really should because it's it's a classic example of albums where you go back and you listen to it, and you're like, yeah, you know, it's a great starting point, but it's also a great album because this is 1969 they make it, and some of the sounds on this album is just hard, hard rock, uh, especially good times, bad times. That like, how it just opens, it just sets a tone, and these guys are blues guys, but yet somehow they found a nice blues rock uh, sound. The album to me kind of loses it with "I Can't Quit You, Babe" and how and how many more times, but I love "Days and Confused," "Communication Breakdown." I haven't heard the live tracks, but the live tracks are really long. But I haven't heard that yet. And then "Let's Up in Two, I like I, I like this probably a little bit better because it's 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 more diverse. Um, you got more classic Zeppelin tunes, probably a little bit more. You got "Whole Lot of Love," "What Is and What Should Never Be," "Heartbreaker," "Live and Love and Made," "Ramble On," and "Moby Dick," and just. This is really just Led Zeppelin. It wasn't so much they were getting the bad stuff out of the way. Led Zeppelin had very minimum of that. Led Zeppelin two just led the way to just just being a perfect album. And of course, Led Zeppelin four they would get to that, but I don't have that in the, in, in my collection yet. Gotta get Led Zeppelin three first. All right, next we we're moving on to John Lennon. Now for John Lennon, I should say that uh, I want to get uh, his out al his albums have been on CD three times. There were the original CDs in the 80s or whatever. There were His albums were, were remixed and then in the early 2000s and then they were remastered in, in 2010. Now, I only want to own the remixes on CD because the remasters, I've heard those online, like how the, the remasters are how they original, originally sounded in 1970-whatever, and those don't sound as great as these, as these remixes. But I don't have all the remixes because those are hard to find now. But here's what I do have. I have the original CD version of Sometime in New York City. I don't... Some people are like, dude, where's Plastic Ono Band? Where's Imagine? Why do you have this one first? Well, I hadn't had this one yet. I got it off of Amazon, not knowing that 
the remixed and remastered CD existed. So this is the basic CD version. It's got some problems to it. I haven't, in terms of like mastering, uh, I haven't gotten around to listening to to it yet. And from what I've heard, it's a very down album. And it's it's actually a two disc album. This is the album, and uh, no, this is the album, and then this is the live jam. But I haven't heard that yet. Uh, and then you got, speaking of depressing albums, you got John Lennon Rock and Roll. Not depressing, but here's here's the context. At this point, John is separated from his wife, Yoko. He goes to Los Angeles. Los Angeles isn't good for John. Too much drugs, too much drinking. And he records an album of, of, of oldies from his favorites. And you can tell, there's, there's a lot of love in this album. But the interpretations just come off as just, Hey, I'm John Lennon, I'm a rock star, and I'm going to make this cover sound like Chuck Berry never did it. And it just comes off as just being, like, too, too much. Stand By Me is a great track, and I, I even, like, bring it on home to me. And the remix, this is the remix CD. I've heard the original version from the 70s, and this one just makes it sound more listenable, I guess, because they just did, they did something. They, 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 they cleaned up the sound or something. Just, it's, it's, a, it's, 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 it's day and night. And then the other one, I, these are the worst John Lennon CDs to own. Not the worst, but you'd have Plastic Ono Band, Imagine, Walls and Bridges, Double Fantasy. Well, I skipped, well, I went to Milk and Honey because I didn't have this on CD. I don't think my dad ever had this one. This came out in 1984, four years after John had passed. It's half John, half Yoko. I haven't, haven't heard Yoko stuff. And it came with some bonus tracks. Um, and so, and, and, and I like John's uh, songs, I'm Stepping Out. I don't want to face it. Nobody told me borrowed time. I don't particularly love Little Flower Princess and Grow Old with Me. It's a really nice track, but unfortunately, it's a demo version because you know he he died before he could you know you know finish making it. Um, and this album just makes you just like wanting more. And you got John Lennon live in New York City uh, from 19, uh, 1971, this concert was, but this came out in 1986. This is one that, if you're a John Lennon fan, you have to have this on CD in the sense that it's not on iTunes and it's really hard to find. In fact, I had to pay quite, uh, quite a bit of money to get it, but at least I have it. There's the disc. Um, and it's also one of the, except for the Elton John live album, this is one of the only times you ever hear, hear John Lennon live. And I think this, this is the only complete live album that he ever made. You got, you know, uh, Well, 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 Instant Karma, Mother, Come Together, makes is on this album, Imagine, Cold Turkey, Hound Dog, the Elvis Presley song. Um, and yeah, nice concert. John Lennon, maybe not the best, you know, rock star performer, but nice concert. All right, now we're moving on to Leonard Skinner. I have their first three albums, starting with uh, Pronounced Leonard Skinner. It's even got the pronunciation on the front there. And I really liked this album. This was an album where it was a debut, very strong debut. It also gave, gave you Free Bird, uh, Tuesday's Gone, Give Me Three Steps, Simple Man. Um, really a, just a band to prove that they are a really, a really cool band to listen to on, on their first album. And I think they wanted you to know that because they even gave you the pronunciation. And this comes with some bonus tracks, um, which are really, uh, really nice to have. Pardon me. There's a there's something there's something on the on the ground. An insect. It's gone now. Then you have Leonard Skinner's Second Helping, their second album with Sweet Home Alabama and uh, the Ballad of Curtis, uh, Ballad of Curtis Lowe and the Needle and the Spoon. Call me the Breeze. And yes, just another really uh, re really good album. The thing with Leonard Skinner is that if you have the, their greatest hits, that's like ten out of ten. All their albums may not hit ten out of ten. But come very close. But I haven't even bothered. But with that said, I, I haven't even bothered to her. Give me back my bullets. I've heard the song, "Give me back my bullets," and all I can do is write about it. I prefer the acoustic version of that song. But this came out in deluxe edition, and I want to get that. And now, and I'm actually kind of sad that I bought this without really, you know, knowing there was a deluxe edition. Uh, and then we have Bruno Mars, a guilty pleasure. I like Bruno Mars. I don't love his second album. Um, but this is the first one, uh, Doo-Wops and Hooligans. This is the, um, bonus track version. Also includes a song called Somewhere in Brooklyn and a piano version of Talking to the Moon. This, I, I got this when I was a junior in high school, so it has that nostalgic vibe. 
It may not be that great of an album, but it's a very pop-friendly album. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. There's a couple of things that are kind of like, ugh. But, uh, but, but I personally get, get, get a big kick out of that. Um, great memories of these songs from high school. I'll still listen to them. And Bruno Mars is, is one of the one of the only I don't want to say only, but one of the best singer songwriters nowadays that has pop pop radio success. So I like it. And now we're on to ah uh, this this is the this is this is the bulk of the bunch. John Mayer. The only two items from John Mayer that I don't have in my CD collection is I don't have his live album as is. And I don't have battle studies because I want to get the extended version. Um, but so you can imagine what I do have. So let's go through them. Inside Once Out. This came out in 1999. It only has eight tracks on it, so it's more of an EP. And I and I just love this cover because the cover says it all. It looks like John Mayer in in like a, a diner booth, and because you even got the diner seats in the back. And that's what the, that's what this album sounds like. It sounds like it sounds like you went into a diner late at night and somebody was just playing. You walked in, you're kind of like, yeah, that was, that, you know, yeah, that was pretty good. You know, may not blew me away, because some of the tracks on here he would re-record for his next album, but you, but you left going back into that quiet, that quiet night, and just thinking to yourself, yeah, I, you know, I had a great night. I went to, a, I went to a cool club, or a cool diner. Saw this guy who easily could perform in a club, but instead he performed at a diner for just those who just wanted to hear him sing. You know, he, he didn't write music for commercial success. He just wants to sing, and for you to hear his music. And that's what this album sounds like. Although the song Comfortable has some or orchestral uh, uh, is, is, uh, accompaniments. That's the word I'm looking for. And, and I really like this album. Now, his first album, Room for Squares, um, I didn't like this as much as the EP. It, it's got 14, 13 tracks on it. Uh, one of the tracks is actually complete silent on track 13 because he's superstitious. Um, some of the tracks that he would that were on here that are also on here, no such thing, my stupid mouth, neon, and back to you. To me, this album, since let's see, track six is City Love. After that, the album kind of falls apart because he put like the hit heavy section of this album in the first five tracks, and then the, the other tr tracks are kind of going meh, and they're just you know hit after hit after hit is yay, and then if you have Seven tracks in a row, they're kind of meh. You kind of get a sour taste in your mouth. But still not bad. I'm not... I was never the hugest fan of Your Body's the Winterland, but it's fun. I'll take it. And, um... Yeah. I'm glad he progressed from this. Then you have Any Given Thursday. Funny he would do this. It's a, it's a two-CD live show. All he has out at the moment is just one album and one EP. But he there are 15 tracks on here. Uh, ex extended jams showing that John Merritt is an incredible guitar player and great frontman for his own band. Uh, you got songs on here that wouldn't appear until the next album, like Something's Missing. And you got uh, Covered in Rain, which never appeared on any, any studio album. And a cover of Stevie Ray Vaughan's Lenny. And a cover of The Police Message in a Bottle. I love the cover, um, but the live album, it's, it's, it's a bit boring at times. Especially you hear the girls in the audience, and they, and you know they're really just there for the hits, and you know that John Mayer's got much much, uh, much more songs than hits. But I need to, but I, I guess I would need to give this more of a listen, is what I'm saying. Uh, and then you, you have heavier things. This is the dual disc with uh, the audio, uh, the CD on one side, and a DVD on the other side. I want to just show this really quickly. If you get the booklet for heavier things, it's one of the most uh, if only I can get it out here. Ah, there it goes. Uh, it's one of the best designed booklets I've ever seen. What John what John does is he, it's every song is set up here. So he tells these little icons are what the, each of the songs are about, and he goes through song by song. He tells you uh, which song was written where. He tells you what part of the song affects uh, which song affects your part of the body. Um, how long each uh, the tempo of each song. What key the song is in, like a lot of like actually fun things to go through this booklet. The album Heavier Things, it's 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 more it's a departure from um well not completely. It's it's a departure from Room for Squares, with maybe the exception of Daughters. But the songs on this album to me are are much more mature. You have more mature songs 
on this album than, say, Room for Squares. Because you got Clarity, Bigger Than My Body, um, New Deep, especially New Deep, Something's Missing, which is the studio version on here, um, and then a couple of others um, that I haven't, re that don't really evoke too much of a memory in me. I can't remember last time that I listened to Only Hard and, and Wheel. But to me, just a much better album. Plus, if you look at compare the covers, he's he's cheeky. He's going for a uh, he's going for a pop hits on the on this album cover. And this album cover, he looks he looks like an artist that is going to work. Which he would do that with his next live album, Try. This is credited as the John Mayer Trio because he's doing this with Steve Jordan and Pino Palladino, two members from his band. It's just the three of them. They only do uh, two songs that are familiar to, to fans. Something's Missing and Daughters. The rest of them are new songs. Some of them never appeared on any studio version. Um, songs like Who, Did you, Who Do You Think I Was? That actually did appear as a studio version. Good Love Is On The Way. Covers of uh, Ray Charles' I Got A Woman and Jimi Hendrix' Wait Until Tomorrow. Gravity and Vultures, which would be on the next album, appear on this album. And this just shows that John Mayer can still have people show up at his concert and just be completely... Complete, completely re redefined. I love it. Ah, uh, Continuum. This is my favorite John Mayer album. Uh, w one of them. It's hard to have an absolute favorite now that I think about it. This is the special edition with the bonus uh, live disc. Uh, what, what do I want to say about Continuum? Continuum is, is one album where there is no theme. You know, Roof for Squares is poppy. Have Your Things is mature. Continuum is everything. You have pop, you have rock, you have um, self self aware songs. You have jams on here, like it was on that was on try. You have everything on the, a lot of things. You, this album could just be what's the word that I, what's the word that I, that I want to use. This could be like the album you give someone to say, hey. This is why he's great because it's, it, you don't just get one flavor on here. You get the whole ice cream buffet on this album. Waiting on the World to Change, uh, I Love, Gravity, The Heart of Life, Stop This Train, Vultures. So I mean, every track is amazing. This is one of those albums where, in my opinion, track after track is amazing, and then when you get to the end, it's like, wow, it's it's all amazing. Uh, and, and then the, the bonus disc, the, uh, the, the, the summer, summer 2012 songs, live. Really nice. Uh, fully exploding on his, on his live album, Where the Light Is, my favorite live album of his, because um, you have a, you have an acoustic set of just him uh, and two others. You have a trio set, which was on the the, the the Tri album, and then you get the band set, which is classic Mayer. And I think that's what he was going for when he, he think he said so on this album, was just so much that he wanted everyone to get an idea of what he was from this one show. And this is pretty much like... Continuum Plus, because almost all the songs from Continuum are on this live album, and you get a sprinkling of, of old songs, like you said, Daughters, uh, Come When I, uh, Who Did You Think I Was, new songs, Come When I Call, a cover of Tom Petty's Free Fallen, and a cover of uh, Ray Charles' I Don't Need No Doctor. And this is, this is Exhibit A for John Mayer, the guitar player. And also, watch the concert film. Extraordinary. I, I played this so much, so much when I was in high school. Then Battle Studies in 2009, I don't have that one. Then 2012, he comes out with Born and Raised. Complete reinvention. This one was a lot more acoustic, and uh, but not as acoustic as uh, Inside One, Inside One's Out. This one was more more of acoustic, writing like Dylan-esque songs. Some people even call this uh, his country album. I, 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 I wouldn't call it that. Um, for this, for a long time, was my favorite John Mayer album. It still is my, my top two favorite John Mayer albums. Probably as good as it can continue, in my opinion. Because this this album was Battle Studies. Just to put it in context, Battle Studies was was a depressing album. This was him getting up from falling down, and you respected the man, and he really did something amazing with this album. Um, Queen of California, um, Shadow Days, love Shadow Days, love is a verb. Walt Grace, Walt Grace's Submarine Test, January nineteen sixty seven. My friend said that could very much be John Mayer's best song. And then his most recent release in 2013 called Paradise Valley, sort of like a companion piece to Born and Raised, in the sense that if you took the basic casual fan and you swapped uh, tracks from both of these albums, someone probably wouldn't tell the difference. Um, this one, um, 
was just was just yeah just I, I just everything you loved about this one was just like again on here but it didn't feel like you already heard this before uh which is kind of weird uh in, in a sense um and also yeah yeah katie perry on here doing a, uh doing a song called who, uh, who you love uh frank ocean doing a song called wildfire there's two songs on here called wildfire and i much prefer john mayer's wildfire than frank ocean's wild wildfire Frank Ocean's Wildfire is just basically John Mayer just invited Frank Ocean in and he's on and they look it's on the album. 